The Jack Benny Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and your schoolie, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, next Sunday night, we will be broadcasting from New York City. So let's go to Jack's house in Beverly Hills, where he's busy preparing for the trip. Inside, west side, all around the town. I wonder if the little flower's leaves are turning brown. La, 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 la. Sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> oh, boy, New York. Bright light, Broadway. So much excitement in New York. Subway, taxi cab, people rushing around. That's where you see all the old vaudeville acts. Powers, Elephants, Sharky the Train Field, Sphinx Mule, Fred Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. I'll, uh, I'll cash a check when I get to New York, but I'll need some money on the train. Better figure out how much I'll need. See, there'll be nine meals in the diner. That's 50 cents a meal. <laughs> That's, uh, 4 Maybe I should get Rochester to pack some sandwiches. <laughs> nah, how often do you go to New York? <laughs> Besides, you get jelly all over the berth. <laughs> anyway, nine meals at four fifty. Yeah, that'll cover it mostly. But to be on the safe side, I'll take five dollars. <laughs> I uh, I better get it out of the safe now. Only me, Ed. It's okay. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. How have you been, Ed? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny. Yeah? Who won the election? <laughs> okay, Ed, you have a nice Christmas? Yes. Quiet, but nice. Good, good. Oh, Ed, I just want to open my safe for a minute. Oh, yes, sir. Shall I turn my back? No, 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 it's all right. <laughs> now, let's see. The combination of the safe is... Right to 45, left to 160, back to 15, then left to 110. There. turn off the alarm. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, there's a loose $5 bill. Yep, that's all I'll need. So long, Ed. I'll see you in the spring. <laughs> take it easy. So long. Well, I take care of that. Now, if I can get finished packing here. So... Oh, it's you, boss. I heard your burglar alarm go off, so I rushed right in from the garage. Oh, you mean you can hear it way out there? Hear it? Everybody in Beverly Hills is digging a foxhole. <laughs> well, I like to be on the safe side. Anyway, I'm glad you came in, Rochester. I want you to finish packing my trunk. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, say, boss. What? I packed your two pays in that hat box. My two pays? Yeah, I put in the blonde one, the dark one, the curly one, and the two with the pearl lining. <laughs> Good. Do you want to take the one with the cowlick? 
The cowlick? Yeah, you know, the one you say makes you look like Van Johnson. <laughs> no, never mind that one. I'll be associating with an older crowd in New York. By the way, Roger, you finished your own packing? I didn't do any packing. I'm traveling light this year. Light? Yeah, one pair of shoes, two pairs of shorts, three pairs of socks, and four pair of dice. <laughs> Right, I should have. I suppose you think you're going to New York and clean out the town. I sure am, boss. But I'll admit Wall Street has me a little worried. What do you mean? Well, I can bring back the money myself. But how am I going to move those buildings? <laughs> now you're just being silly. Look, Rochester, get my suits out of the closet. And... Go ahead, Rochester. I'll answer the door. Oh, hello, Larry. Why aren't you home packing? Oh, I'm packed already. I just came over to see if I could help you. Oh, I'm getting along all right, kid. Gee, Mr. Benny, I'm all excited. I've never taken such a long trip before. Oh, you'll love New York. Now, won't he, Rochester? Yes, sir, especially this time of year. Yeah, and don't forget, Larry, we changed at Chicago. Oh, I won't have to. I've got mine on already. <laughs> Larry, I mean we changed screens. That's where we get off the cheap and take the 20th century. Oh, oh. Say, kid, what are you going to sing on our first program in New York? Got it all set? Yes, would you like to hear it, Mr. Benny? Yeah, yeah, I want to see if it's okay. Oh, hold it a minute, kid. There's the phone. Hello? Hiya, Jackson. Oh, hello, Phil. I'm busy packing. Are you packed yet? Well, I would be, but my laundry hasn't come back. My shirts and things. Well, for heaven's sake, we're leaving in two hours. Haven't you any other shirt? No, those were the only ones I had. Oh, well, that's different. Rochester, let everything else go and finish ironing Mr. Harris's shirt. <laughs> Hurry up. But, boss, you promised Miss Stanwyck you'd get herself out first. <laughs> Miss Stanwyck can wait. This is an emergency. All right, Phil, we'll bring it to the station. Okay, see you later, Jackson. I'll meet you on the shelf. That's a cheese. The cheese. That's the name of the train. I know. I pulled a switch. <laughs> oh, Harris, you curly headed clown. What keeps you from going high at you, boy? <laughs> Because you can't get a high hat on a low brow. Now, goodbye. Okay, Larry, let's hear that song you're going to do, will you, kid? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's swell. That's well, Larry. That song will be fine for next week's program. Larry, I'll meet you at the Santa Fe station a half hour before our train leaves. Okay. Say, Mr. Benny, when you're on this march of dimes through, you want me to go along and sing? Oh, sure. Sure, kid. I was depending on you. Now, run along and I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. So long, Larry. Oh, say, Rochester. Yes, boss. As long as we're going on this tour, do you think I should take my violin to New York? You do, and they'll run you up that tree in the grove in Brooklyn. <laughs> They will not. Now go upstairs and get my violin. Okay. Uh, come in. Pardon me. Are you Mr. Benny? Yes. My name is Wimby. Malcolm Wimby. Uh -huh. I heard you were going out of town for a while, and I thought maybe you'd rent me your house. Rent my house? No, no, I don't think so. But gee, Mr. Benny, I haven't had a place to live since I got here. The hotels are crowded, and you can't get an apartment, and they're always painting the benches and the parts. Well, well look. I, last night, I even tried to sleep on a streetcar. And you couldn't sleep, huh? I couldn't. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. What? Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Look. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Went the buzzer? No, the guy next to me was snoring. <laughs> oh, well, look, fella. Gee, Mr. Benny, i got to find a place to live. I ain't got no place to sleep. Well, I'd like to rent you my house, Mr. Wimbish, but I'll be back in just two months. Well, that's all right. I ought to be awake by then. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, okay, I'll rent you the house. Thanks. I'll look around and see if I like it. Oh, oh, well, just wander through the house. If there's anything you don't like, let me know. Then I will. Now, dog gone with all these interruptions. I'll never get finished packing. Oh, say, boss. Rochester, did you find my violin? Not yet. I looked every place. Well, did you look in the violin case? Uh-huh. I opened the case and all I found was four strings and a fat termite. <laughs> <laughs> what? A termite ate my violin? Not only that, when I peeked in, he spit the bridge at me. <laughs> Rochester, that's a big fib and you go. No, now go, go and find my... Now go and find my violin. Now what is it? Come in. 
Hello? Oh, Mr. Benny, I'm Pauline, Miss Livingston's maid. Yes, yes, I know. Well, I came over to tell you that Miss Livingston has a bad cold, so instead of meeting you at the house, she's going right to the station and get on the train. Oh, Miss Livingston has a cold? That's too bad. Did you rub something on her chair? I tried to, Mr. Benny, but she's ticklish. Oh, well, what about the doctor? He's ticklish, too. <laughs> No, no, Paulie, I meant, uh, what did the doctor say about her cold? Well, he said she could go to New York as long as she got right in her berth and stayed there. Oh, well, thanks for coming over and telling me. You're welcome. Uh, oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? <laughs> what is it, Paulie? Uh. Well, Miss Livingston didn't have room for all her things, so she wants you to cook this. <laughs> in your suitcase. Uh, this? Yes. <laughs> well, Pauline, I don't want to take that. I mean, suppose my suitcase falls open, people will see us. I mean, what will they think? Well, they could think it's yours. <laughs> mine, mine don't have those clips for the stockings. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pauline, you better run down to the train. Miss Livingston may need you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Pauline, Paul. Oh, she took the girdle with her. The good. Hey, Mr. Yes. Benny. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. I looked around the house, and it looks pretty good. But tell me, do you have any mice? Mice? Well, well, I have to admit that we do have a few. Good. I hate to live alone. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll go look at some of the other rooms now. Yes, make yourself at home. He's a democratic sort of a guy, isn't he? <laughs> Now, say, Rockard, I just happened to think of something. I've got to make some speeches at several banquets, so I better take along my tuxedo. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Well, I was pressing your pants, and I think I left the iron on a wee bit too long. <laughs> well, look, maybe I can wear my... Oh, yes, when I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Rockard, you better start taking out the bags. We've got to leave right now. Okay, boss, okay. I'll just put on my tie and my coat, and then I'll be ready in almost any time now. Huh? Say, Mr. Benny. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot about you. I looked around the house, and I liked it all right. But in the kitchen, I turned the faucets on, uh -huh. and the hot water runs cold, and the cold water runs rusty. Rusty? You're yeah. in California, Bob. That's orange juice. <laughs> now, here's the key. Come on, Rochester. Let's go. See, the station is crowded. Rochester. Yes, boy. Put on your red cap and carry my bags to the train. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got to meet my gang. Yeah. Train leaving on Type 5 for Anaheim, Arcusa, and Cucamonga. Train leaving on Track 5 for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. See, we're all supposed to meet here at the information desk. Now, when... Oh, there they are. Hey, Phil, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Hiya, Jackson. Say, fellas, Mary went right to the train. She's got a cold. Oh, that's too bad. Say, uh, what are you carrying there under your arm? Well, I heard it was pretty cold in New York, and I want to be on the safe side. But Jackson, a smudge pot. <laughs> Well, I'm not taking any chances. You know. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. Does anybody want to go to Anaheim, Azusa, or Cucamonga? <laughs> Say, John, have you got all the tickets? Well, not quite, Jack. At the last minute, Phil said he needed an extra one. Phil, who are you sneaking on this trip with you? Well, it's Frankie, my guitar player. I've got to take him along on account of the magazine. The magazine? Yeah, he reads to me. <laughs> now, for goodness sake, now I have to buy another ticket. Hi, hey, Jack. Where you been? Ain't seen you around. What? Oh, hello. Hello. Who was that, Jackson? Oh, he's a racetrack house that used to hang around Hollywood Park, you know. Well, I'll meet you later, fellas. Now, let's see. The ticket window ought to be... Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Medusa, and Cucamonga. Oh, come on. Somebody must want to go to Anaheim, Cucamonga. <laughs> now, let me see. The ticket window ought to be... Uh, Jack. Uh, Jack, uh, come here a minute. Huh? Oh, it's you again. What is it? I uh, didn't want to say anything while you were with your friends there, but uh, where are you going? New York. What train you taking? The chief. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why, uh, what's the matter? 
take the El Capitan. <laughs> but, but I like the cheese. Come here, man. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And take my tip, bud. The El Capitan will beat the cheese in the Kansas City by three lengths. <laughs> What? Uh, according to yesterday's performance, it can't miss. Well, look, I'm sorry. I'm taking the cheese. And... Look, come in. Uh-huh. I was talking to the engineer who's riding El Capitan, and he tells me that today she's ready. <laughs> well, I don't know. And uh, look at the breeding. El Capitan is by 20th century out of Golden State Limited. <laughs> well, thanks for the tip, but I'm going to stick to the cheese. Why? Come here a minute. <laughs> Don't noise this around, see? No. But I found out the chief is a sleeper. <laughs> So long, fella. Okay, okay. So long. <laughs> now, let's see. The ticket window should be... Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Matusa, and Cucamonga. Look, we're not asking much. Two of you, or even one of you. Just somebody to keep the engineer company. <laughs> Here's the ticket window. Oh, pardon me. Are you the ticket clerk? Well, oh, what do you think I am in this cage? A canary? <laughs> well, don't get huffy about it. All I want is a ticket on the cheese. Oh. Yeah, would you like the $60 ticket or the $140 ticket? Well, uh, what's the difference? Well, with the $140 ticket, you ride inside. <laughs> Well, naturally, I want to ride on the inside. After all, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be. You're not as young as anybody used to be. <laughs> now, don't get fresh. All I want is a ticket to New York. Return trip? No, one way. Good. <laughs> now, cut that out. And stop wasting time. I have to get to New York by Thursday. I'm sorry, but our trains are all booked up. Well, think, man. Think there must be one train that has room for me. Leaving on track for... Look, look, there are 5,000 people in this station. Isn't there somebody? Anybody? Anybody volunteer? Please! 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 I'm fired if I don't get somebody on the train! Clark, I've waited here long enough. You just got Well, me. well, you're in luck, Blue Eyes. <laughs> I found one ticket on the cheese. Good, I'll take it. The cheese, leaving for New York. Oh, boy. Hurry up, hurry up, will you, Clark? Thanks. Thanks. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> How's Miss Livingston? Oh, she's fine. Can I go in the compartment and see her? Well, she's asleep right now. Oh, well, I'll see you later. Say, conductor. Yes, sir. How long before we get to San Bernardino? Oh, it'll be about two hours, sir. Two hours? Why so long? First, we got to go through Anaheim, Mazusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> oh, that guy got his way anyway. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny Program. <laughs> The 
Lucky Strike program, coming to you from the Astor Hotel in New York City, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a man who got on a train in Los Angeles and came to New York by way of... Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucahansa. What scenery. And here he is, the star of our show, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, when I arrived in New York, now you won't believe this, but I got an official welcome. In fact, Mayor LaGuardia wanted me to be with him so much, he made me an honorary fireman. <laughs> Gosh, what an honor it was to meet Mayor LaGuardia. There he was, dressed up in his fire hat and everything. And Don, when he shook hands with me, I was chilled. Jack, you mean thrilled. No, chilled. He stuck a cold nozzle in my hand. <laughs> Well, anyway, Don, here we are in New York. What a town. I don't know what it is, but it's so different from Waukegan. <laughs> yes, sir. You really love New York, don't you, Jack? Well, I, uh, I like it, you know. Like it? Why, Jack, when we arrived here, the first thing you did when you stepped off the train was to get down and kiss the ground. I did not. I slipped on the ice. <laughs> Well, Jack, if you only slipped on the ice, why did you stay down there so long? I told you I was shaking hands with Mayor LaGuardia. <laughs> I, mean, I... Don, I, I had to do it then. After all, who knows when I'm going to be down that way again. <laughs> anyway, Don, kidding aside, it's really great to be back in New York. Yes, it is, Jack, and my wife and I are having a grand time. Oh, uh, oh, you brought your wife with you. I didn't know that. Yes, you see, Jack, it's our anniversary, and we wanted to be together. Oh, your anniversary. Well, congratulations, Don. Oh, thanks, Jack. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do just for a little anniversary present. As long as we're in New York, I'll pay all your expenses, your hotel bill and everything, for you and your wife. Oh, you don't have to do that, Jack. Oh, yes, 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 I insist. No, Jack, no, really. I don't feel that I should... Don, I don't want to hear any more about it. I insist on paying your wife's expenses as well as your own. Well, thanks. Thanks, Jack. That's darn nice of you. That's all right. By the way, Don, uh, where are you staying? At the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> oh. Oh, the, uh, the Waldorf Astoria. Yes, it's on Park Avenue. I know where it is, you big fat head. <laughs> All right, Don, I made a promise, and I'm going to stick to it. You can live at the Waldorf. Oh, thanks. And here's a handful of nickels you know where to eat. <laughs> I mean, there's no use standing in line for change. All right, know. folks, I know the temperature dropped the point, but Harris is here to heat up this joint. Hiya, <laughs> fellas. Hey, Phil, Phil, you don't have to bust in here like a heat wave. Harris is here to warm up the joint. It's not that cold in New York. It ain't, huh? No. Well, it's the first time I ever seen the Statue of Liberty blowing on her hands. <laughs> oh, 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 Harris, you joy boy. You're right from Dixie, and you're in your cups, you kid. <laughs> yes, yes. Phil, yes. stop with those silly gags. Everybody who can't stand the cold makes up jokes about it. If you were red-blooded like I am, you could stand this type of weather. Oh, sure, sure. What do you mean, oh, sure, sure? Remember the other morning when you were shaving and cut yourself? Yeah. Your blood came out, went hubba-hubba, and crawled right back in again. <laughs> well, that happened when I first got here, but I'm getting up. Come in. Mr. Benny, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Beck, the manager of the Astor Hotel. Now, how do you do, sir? And since you're honoring us by broadcasting from our ballroom, I want to make sure that nothing interferes with your program. Well, thank you, thank you. You're very considerate. Are the microphones working all right? Yes, yes. Well, I'd better make sure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hello, Mom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Look, look, the microphones are all right. Now, look at this. They're all... Because I don't want anything to interfere with your program. Uh, thank you, thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, Phil Harris's orchestra is going to play in. Is number. the piano in tune? Yes, the piano's in tune. Look at the piano is in tune. It's in tune. <laughs> but Mr. Beck, will you please? You know, I used to play a little bit myself. <laughs> Mr. Beck, Mr. Beck, Mr. Beck. Believe me, everything is all right. Good, because I don't want anything to interfere with your program. 
I know, I know. Everything is fine. Well, then, I'll be running along, and if there's anything you Look out! Need, Look just... out for those steps! Mr. Bang! I knew it. Play, Phil. <laughs> that was Accentuate the Positive, played by Phil Harris, and his New York, New Haven, and it shouldn't happen to Hartford Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one I wanted Mary to hear at all. <laughs> Say, Phil. <laughs> I love that gag. Say, Phil, where, uh... Bill, where did you pick up these boys? Oh, what are you talking about? This is my regular orchestra. I brought them from Hollywood. From Hollywood? Yeah, you just don't recognize them. They're wearing shoes. <laughs> shoes? Oh, yes, they are. How in the world did you ever get them to put them on? Well, I told them it was a publicity stunt. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, are they having fun here in New York? Well, their feet hurt them, but they're having a good time. Well, that's fine. Hey, Donzie, how about you? You enjoying your stay here? Uh, I sure am, Phil, especially since my wife is with me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is your anniversary, isn't it? Happy anniversary, Don. Well, well, thanks, Phil. And you know what, Phil? No, what? Well, Jack's paying all the expenses for my wife and me at the Waldorf Astoria. Say, that's great. Jack who? (laughs) (laughs) Jack me. That's Jack who. I'm paying all the expenses for Don and his wife while they're in New York. It was my own idea. It can't be the heat. It's cold here. (laughs) All right, it's cold here. Oh, by the way, Phil, I saw you last night at Frank Fay's new show. Did you see it, Jack? Frank Fay? Not yet, Don. Ah, well, don't miss it. (laughs) He's a scream. (laughs) I tell you, Jack, my stars still (laughs) ache. Oh. Frank... Frank Fay, huh? Yeah, you should have been there, Jackson. You know, Don laughs louder at Frank Fay than he does at you. Oh, he does, eh? Oh. What else do you see, Phil? Oh, I've seen a lot of shows. You know, I've been going to the theater every night. Frank Fay. <laughs> I saw Bloomer Girl. I saw Laughing Room Only, Mexican Hay Ride, and then I saw... Just a, a minute, called... Phil. Listen, Wilson, what's so funny about Frank Fay? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I think he's one of the greatest comedians I've ever seen. Oh, you do, eh? Yes, I do. Well, then get him to pay your wife's expenses at the Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no sucker. Oh, Jackson, you don't expect Don to go to a show and not laugh at it, do you? No, but he doesn't have to keep raving about Frank Fay all the oh. time. I wasn't raving about him. I just said I liked him. All right, you like him. That doesn't mean you have to go around telling people that I'm washed up. <laughs> Then he is through. Finished. Who said that? I can read between the lines, brother. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? The minute about? he gets in town, he's got to go right, right over and see Frank Faye. Well, now, oh. wait a minute, Jackson. He didn't When he comes to the program, all he talks about, Frank oh. Faye, Frank Faye, Frank Faye. <laughs> Frank Faye. What about me? Ha! <laughs> well, what about I it? Well, what about I it? see no reason for paying Mrs. Wilson's hotel bill. <laughs> so, the deal's off, Doc. Oh. Oh, boy, I wish I'd get out of my girdle that easy. <laughs> Never mind the joke. You're here to do the commercial, and it's time we had one. So well, go ahead Jack, I, I should have mentioned this to you, but the sponsor told me that while we're in New York, he'd like a little variety on the commercials, so he's sending over a special announcer to do them. Oh. Oh, well, he'll probably show up. That's strange, bringing in another announcer. I wonder if... Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Larry. How are you, Benny? Well, Larry, you got here just in time to do your song. I know, and I'm so nervous. It's the first time I've ever sang in New York. Well, I can understand how you feel, kid. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time I played my violin here in New York. I was just about your age, and I was just as nervous as you are. Well, you should have been with those Indians shooting those arrows at you. (laughs) Well, stop exaggerating. Larry's nervous enough as it is. Now, go ahead and sing, kid, and don't worry about the Indian. I mean, don't worry about anything. <laughs> okay. Hold it a minute, kid. Come in. Yes? Mr. Benny, I'm coming here to welcoming you to New York. <laughs> yeah, why, it's... It's Mrs. Noosebaum. I'm resembling maybe the Bloomer Girl. <laughs> No, no, of course not, but I'm glad you're here. Thank you. 
And Mr. Benny, I'm inviting you after your broadcast. You should be guest of honor at my new restaurant. Oh, you have a restaurant here? Yes, and what a romantic place. We feature soft lights and hard salami. (laughs) Well, I'll be very happy to drop in, but I didn't know you were in the restaurant business. Oh, this is only of a recent nature. Oh. I've been running this restaurant only since I stopped working for... You should excuse the expression, Fred Allen. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 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 oh. Not only is my restaurant serving the best from delicacies, but we are also featuring a floor show which would make Herman Billingsley turn Greek with envy. (laughs) Oh, you have a floor show, too? Yes. And for my featured attraction next week, I'm trying to get Frankie Boy. Oh. You mean Sinatra? Who (laughs) else? When Frankie Boy is singing, one shirt on the van, we should meet again. I am telling him instantly. (laughs) And when he's singing, don't fence me in. I am already waiting at the gate. <laughs> well, Mrs. Nussbaum, I'll be very happy to come to your restaurant, but how do I get there? Uh, first, you're taking the subway. Uh-huh. Then you're crossing the bridge, and you're finding yourself in, you should excuse the expression, Brooklyn. <laughs> oh. And, Mr. Benny, you should realize how lucky you are I am inviting you to my restaurant on a Sunday. Why? Well, I will clarify. In my restaurant on Monday, we are having Meatless Tuesday. <laughs> this is followed by Weepy Last Wednesday. Uh-huh. Then comes Without Turkey Thursday, <laughs> which precedes Flounder Last Friday. <laughs> and sugar, sugar you positively cannot get on Saturday. Uh-huh. But when you come on Sunday, you are very lucky. Why? Because on Sunday, we're closed all together. <laughs> well, it was certainly nice seeing Mrs. Nussbaum again. All right, Larry, go ahead and sing. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you, where's Miss Livingston? Why, she still has a bad cold. She's listening to the program at the hotel. I'm sure she'll be with us next week. Well, Mr. Benny, would it be all right if I dedicate my number to her? Oh, that'd be very nice, Larry. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Go ahead and sing, kid. (laughs) Why, tonight is young and you're so beautiful, sung by Larry Stevens, the candy bar kid. And I'm sure Mary likes (laughs) it. Say, Larry, uh, this is your first trip, uh, Larry. This is your first trip to New York, isn't it? Huh? Yes, Mr. Benny. Well, have you been anywhere? Have you seen any of the sights? Well, I went to Central Park and the Bronx Zoo. Oh. And yesterday, when I was walking along the street, I saw the Empire State Building. Oh, well, you know, that's the tallest building in the world, you know. I know. So I took an elevator and went all the way up to the top. Well, well, did you look down at the street? Well, what for? I just came from there. <laughs> Calls for some kind of an answer there. Larry, the only reason people take the elevator to go up. Come in. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Why, Fred. And how are you? Well, I haven't time to ban the pleasantries, Mr. Benny. This really isn't a social call. I'm, uh, I'm here on business. Business? Yes. Your uh, sponsor hired me to read the commercial. <laughs> oh, so you're the guy. But, Fred, I thought radio was through with... I mean, you were through with radio. <laughs> well, I haven't got my own program anymore... But uh, I do odd jobs, a commercial here, a sound effect there, an occasional sob on John's other wife. (laughs) And uh, by that, you manage to eke out a living? If it doesn't make you too unhappy, yes. (laughs) Hmm. 
Uh, and here I am tonight slumming on your show. <laughs> Couldn't slumming, you that for your up? information, Alan, my program is right up on top. On top? Listen, Benny, your program is so low, gravity will have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and your... Pro- <laughs> You won't find it in there. I called in a little writer who was going by on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, yes. furthermore, he gave me this in case the other one didn't go. <laughs> furthermore, your program is so, so full of corn, its rating goes up and down with the grain market. <laughs> That's the one we gave you. I mean... Yeah. And another thing, I don't believe Mary Livingston is sick tonight at all. You just made her stay home so you'd be sure of one listener. <laughs> all right, all right. Look, you came here to read a commercial, so do it and get out of here. Oh, Mr. Benny, you're losing your temper. <laughs> I am not losing my temper. Well, your forehead is getting red right up to the roots of your toupee. <laughs> Listen, Alan, I don't know why my sponsor had to send you over. Doesn't he know that I pay Don Wilson a big salary to read the commercial? Can't Wilson read it? Well, yes, but your sponsor feels that with the local butchers on strike, it isn't safe for all of that beef to linger too long in one spot. Oh, Phil, I can't understand the sponsor sending a guy like that over here to do a commercial. Oh, I don't know, Jackson. Alan's a pretty sharp apple. You know, he was on information, please. So what? I've been on with the quiz kids three times. Oh, sharp yeah, apple. that's right. I remember the last time you were on with the quiz kids, you got sword slapperman. That's Copperman. Oh. oh. Joel Copperman. <laughs> Had a right to get sore at him. You know, he because he used square root to figure out my age. And I wasn't supposed to... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. Is that you, Rochester? It ain't the voice of the turtle. (laughs) Rochester, where are you? I'm in Harlem. Well, why is it every time we come to New York, I have the same trouble with you? I didn't even see you when we got off the train. I jumped off the train when it passed 135th Street. Jumped off? Yeah, when I go to Harlem, I like to get a running start. <laughs> Roger, you got the keys to my trunk and you've been gone four days. I bet you're on some kind of a wild party. Oh, no, no, boss. No, I'm not. You're not, eh? Oh, no, sir. I'm here visiting my grandmother. You're what? My grandmother. She's 88 years old. 88 years old? Yeah, sweetest little old lady you ever saw. Well. Uh, Granny, uh, pour me another cup of tea, will you please? (laughs) Now, Rochester. Uh, Just a minute, boss. Put an olive in it, honey. (laughs) Olive? Rochester, what did you say about an olive? Uh, That's my grandmother's name, Olive Johnson. (laughs) What? I got a cousin named Pimento. Rochester, you're not telling me the truth, and I just happen to remember that your grandmother lives in Los Angeles. Oh, that's the grandmother on my father's side. This is the one on my mother's side. What about the grandmother you said you had in Chicago? She joined the wax. (laughs) There you are, Rochester. You got yourself all mixed up. You can't have three grandmothers. What'd you say, boss? I said you can't have three grandmothers. Are you sure? Of course. Okay. You'll have to get off my lap, honey. We ain't related. Now, Rochester, you're not fooling me. I know you're at a party. I want you to be at my hotel in an hour. Goodbye. But, boss, can I stay just a little longer? If I leave now, it'll break up all the fun. Why, how many people are there at the party? Twenty-two. Twenty-two? Then how can your leaving make any difference? Because twenty-one of them are girls. (laughs) Twenty-one of them are girls? You're the only man? And how can you call that a party? Oh, boss, (laughs) come on. I don't want to hear another word about it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Every time I come to New York, this happens. Every time. Play there. Fred, I want to thank
thank you for coming over. It's nice of my sponsor to have you do the commercial. Well, I want to thank you, too, Jack. Thank me? What for? Well, your sponsor said you'd uh, pay me. Oh. Oh. Oh, there he goes again, folks, with that oh, oh, oh. For 12 years now, he's been going oh, oh, oh. You know, someday he's going to ad-lib a fourth oh, and his writers will go out and drop dead in a body. <laughs> hmm. You hear that, folks? He said, hmm, what a change of pace. <laughs> Look, Fred, instead of sending you a check, I'll be a guest on your program. But, Jack, I haven't any program. Well, then I'll just walk around with you for about a half hour someday. Uh, <laughs> good night, folks. Good City, the first stop on their March of Dimes tour, we bring you the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to Jack Benny's room at the Sherry Netherland Hotel. Jack is waiting for the gang to show up as they're all going ice skating in Central Park. All around the town You'll be able to see it When the snow is off the ground Rochester Hail and snow together Ice all over the walk You slip and you slop And you flip and you flop On the sidewalks of New York <laughs> Rochester, stop singing You know I'm going ice skating So you better get my things ready Okay By the way, did you have my ice skate sharpened Like I told you to? I sure did, boss I had it done yesterday When I was up in Harlem Good. Are they nice and sharp? Sharp? What do you think I shaved you with this morning? <laughs> Stop being so silly and get my things ready. As long as I'm going skating, I want you to get out my knickers and press them. Boss, you better wear your long pants. You don't look good in knickers. Your legs are too skinny. My legs are not skinny. They ain't. Remember that time you played Hamlet and had to wear those tights? Well, what about it? The theater manager took one look at you and said, if those legs have any muscle, they must be on inside the bone. <laughs> What? You had to tie knots in your legs to make it look like you had knees. I don't care. I'm going to wear my knickers. Now get them out and press them. But, boss, you, you know they have valet service in this hotel, don't you? I know, I know. What do you think I've got you for? Me? Yes, you. Well, listed alphabetically, attendant, actor, auto mechanic, barber, look, right. bartender, butler, bodyguard, bellhop, busboy... Look, Rochester... Cook, I'm... chauffeur... Uh, companion, charwoman, chambermaid. Rochester, that's enough. I got more viewers than the federal government. <laughs> Rochester, stop with that talk and start pressing my knickers. Okay. Doorman, dishwasher, dusted dog. Oh, water. Rochester, stop complaining. You don't do so much. All I know is, anytime somebody asks me to shake hands, I gotta put something down. <laughs> now, you know that's not true. Anyway, I've got to get... Rochester, put down the iron, the whisk broom, and the shoe brush and answer the door. What? Oh, never mind. Go press the door. I mean the knickers. It's going to be pretty cold in the park, so get out my long underwear. Come in. Well, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, gee, Mary, I'm glad you're over your cold. Are you sure it's all right for you to be out today? Yes, Jack. The doctor told me I was completely well. Good. Then he kissed me goodbye and said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> the, the doctor kissed you goodbye? Wasn't that awful? It certainly was. Fine doctor. When he kissed you, why didn't you slap his face? How could I? I was holding his bag for him. <laughs> oh, I get it. You wanted him to kiss you. <laughs> you catch on fast, don't you, Jackson? <laughs> Jackson, yeah. Look, Mary, you don't have to make any outside dates. While we're in New York, I'm going to take you around. Oh, sure. Just like last year. Before we left California, you said, Mary, when we get to New York, I'm really going to show you the town. Well, I did, didn't I? Yeah, from the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> well, they don't let you up there for nothing, sister. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? When we got to the top, you looked over the edge, saw a nickel on the sidewalk, and wanted to jump. <laughs> I did not want to jump. Anyway, I was just bragging about my eyesight. Pretty good when you can see a nickel from the top of the Empire State Building. You know? Some eyesight. When you got down to the street, you found out it was a manhole cover. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I wish I could find that wise guy that painted a buffalo on it. <laughs> anyway, this time, Mary, you and I will really go places. You know? Say, boss! Oh, hello, Miss Lewis. It's good to see you up and around again. Well, thank you. I'm feeling fine now. What do you want, Rochester? Your shirts just came back from the laundry. My shirt's good. Say, that's wonderful service. Why did you send them out? I don't remember the day, but we were still on for Joe. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. And I thought they were lost. Rochester, are those the shirts we sent out in 1934? It must have been before that, boss. These have lace collars. <laughs> oh, those. Well, put them away. I'll give them to my writers for Christmas. <laughs> Say, Rochester. Rochester, what is my breakfast coming up? Is you ordered from room service? Yeah, a long time ago. You want something to eat, Mary, before we go skating? No, thanks. Say, Jack, I can't get over you living in such a classy hotel as the Sherry Netherlands. Why? Well, every other time you came to New York, you stayed at the, uh, at the, um... The Acme Plaza. <laughs> oh, yes. What a creepy joint that was. Well, I'll admit it wasn't the best hotel in New York, Mary, but it certainly was conveniently located. You're not kidding. All you had to do was walk up one flight of steps and you were in the subway. <laughs> Oh, Mary, it wasn't that far down. What gave you that idea? At one end of the lobby, they were mining coal. <laughs> they were not. Then why did all the bellboys have lamps in their caps? <laughs> because the room clerk's name was John L. Lewis. <laughs> Let's drop it, will you? Come in. Your breakfast, Mr. Benny. Oh, good, good. Put it right over here on the table. Sure you don't want anything, Mary? No, thanks. Gee, I'm hungry. There you are, sir. And here's the check. Oh, Hand me my glasses, Rochester. Here you are. Thanks. I want to see if they have these prices right. You want me to call your accountant, boss? <laughs> no, I can handle this myself. Now, let's see. What? Ninety-five cents? Why, that's outrageous. You want me to call your lawyer, boss? <laughs> Not yet. How in the world could this be ninety-five cents? Let's see, 20 cents for orange juice. Isn't that awfully high? Well, you see, sir, we don't grow oranges here. They shipped in from California. So what? Postage stamps are the same price in California. They come from Washington. <laughs> I'm just the waiter, Mr. Benny. I don't have anything to do with the prices. Look at this. Two eggs, 40 cents. Do you realize that's 20 cents an egg? Yes, sir. 20 cents for one little egg. What's in an egg that could make it worth 20 cents? Well, it's a whole day's work for a hen, sir. <laughs> Ten cents for coffee. Well, that's all right. Hey, what's that extra quarter for? That's a 25-cent charge for serving meals in the room, sir. Oh, well, open the door. I'll eat it out in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that won't help, sir. But if you don't want the breakfast, I'll take it back. No, no, I guess it isn't your fault. Hmm, 95 cents. Here, waiter, here's a dollar. You can keep the change. <laughs> Here. Oh, thank you, sir. Now I can buy that farm in Connecticut. <laughs> Look, just go, will you? Yes, sir. Mary, Mary, are you sure you don't want anything? If you do, I can call the waiter back. Never mind. I wouldn't go through that again for eight million dollars. Yeah, well, I might as well eat. Yeah, you better hurry up, Jack. The gang will be here pretty soon. Mm, there's somebody at the service entrance. Oh, Rochester! Just a minute, boss. I'm ironing your long underwear. Well, open the back door. I can't. You've got it sewed up for the winter. <laughs> That's not the one I mean. Oh, well, never mind. Come in. Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. I'm glad you're over your cold. Well, thank you, Larry. And by the way, I also want to thank you for dedicating that song to me last week. It was sweet of you. Well, I was glad to do it, Miss Livingston. Would you like to hear the one I'm going to sing next Sunday? Yeah, sing it to us, kid, while I finish my breakfast, will you? Okay. Ah, uh, that was... That was swell, kid. Swell. Very good. Say, Larry, I meant to tell you, you were wonderful on the March of Dimes show we did at Carnegie Hall last night. Yes, Larry, you were really good. And don't forget, on Tuesday... Our March of Dime show will be at the Academy of Music in Philadelphia and the following Monday at the Symphony Hall in Boston. 
So, kid, you haven't seen all the sights in New York. I mean, if you haven't, you better do it in the next few days. You know? Oh, I've been around quite a bit, Mr. Benny. I went to Rockefeller Center, the Statue of Liberty, and yesterday I went to Grant's tomb. Oh, Grant's tomb, huh? Gee, that's funny. I remember the first time I came to New York. No, I went to Grant's tomb, too. Yeah, but Grant wasn't in it yet. <laughs> Grant wasn't in it yet. Grant wasn't in it yet. Very funny stuff. Very funny stuff. Look, Mary, the minute you come back on the program, you know, you start right in with... Come in. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Phil. Say, Jackson, now that I'm here, we better grab the skates and let's get on up the... Well, Mary... You pretty baby. How are your eyes, ears, nose, and throat? Oh, I'm fine, Phil. Yes, sir. She's fit of the fiddle, and I'm her beau. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jackson, you blue-eyed buffoon. (laughs) You're hot as a firecracker, and you started in as a punk. (laughs) Hey, Phil, I certainly stole that one from you, didn't I? Well, you stole it from somebody. I know you didn't add libet. Don't worry about me, brother. I can think pretty fast. Oh, sure. You rode up and down in the elevator all day because you couldn't ad lib the floor you wanted to get off at. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It was just a nice day, and I thought I'd enjoy the ride. That's all. Come in. Hello, Don. Hi, you fellas. Well, hello, Mary. Glad to see you. Mary, I'm awfully glad to see you again. Well, kids, I've got my skates with me. Are we all set? Pretty soon, Don. i got to get into some warm clothes. Well, you better because it's pretty cold out. Say, Phil, did you take my advice and see the new Frank Fay show? Frank Fay, Frank Fay. There he goes again with that Frank Fay. Yeah, I saw it last night, Don. But first I went to the Star Club and I had about five cocktails. Then I went to the El Morocco and I had about ten cocktails. And then I went to the 21 Club and matched that number. <laughs> oh, then you went to the Frank Fay show. Huh? Yeah, it's called Harvey. Harvey, am I old enough to see it? Well, certainly, Larry. That's the new show in which Frank Fay plays the part of a fellow who's always a little drunk. And he imagines he keeps seeing a white rabbit six feet tall. He imagines it? Yes. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something's wrong. What's wrong? I saw the rabbit. (laughs) Phil, Phil, that's an imaginary rabbit and nobody can see it. What are you talking about? He came off the stage, sat down beside me and asked me what I liked about the South. Oh, my goodness. Then the rabbit got mad and walked away. Well, I don't blame him. He was probably jealous because your eyes were pinker than his. (laughs) That's exactly what happened. (laughs) Exactly what happened. Phil, we've been trying to explain to you that in that play, there is no rabbit. I don't know. They're taking in plenty of lettuce at the box office. (laughs) Oh, Harris, you... Oh, shut up. (laughs) Now, we're going skating. Let's get started. All right, let's let's get get going. I want to go a little bit. Oh! What's the matter, Mary? I forgot my scarf and my gloves. Well, I'll call your hotel and have Pauline bring them over. Mary, you're living at the Astor, aren't you? Yeah. I'm getting it. Astor Hotel, 44th and Broadway, overlooking Times Square in New York City. Operator. Every room suited to your taste. Bachelor apartments, bridal suites, coffee shop, and spacious lobby. Operator, I'm... Elevator cl- service, room service, tailor shop, jewelry shop, and radio in every room. Look, all I also, want is... Also, writing I... paper, pen and ink, combination writing disc that folls up into a dresser. Look, I want to get Miss Daily Livingston's rates, list. weekly rates, monthly rates, and traveler's checks, cash without question. There's no question. So, if you're want... ever in New York, the only place to live is the Astor Hotel, 44th and Broadway, overlooking Times Square. Where? Operator, operator, I'm trying to I'm get... I'm sorry, your three minutes are up. Goodbye. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Oh, well, Mary, you can wear my mittens. Now, kids, as soon as I get my things on, we'll catch a cab and we'll go to Central Park. <laughs> comes another cab, Jack. Taxi, taxi. Gee, it's tough to get a cab in New York. Taxi, taxi. Hmm. It's 14 that passed us already. Gosh, you think they'd be glad to pick up fares from a swanky hotel like the Sherry Netherlands. Hey, Jackson, look, here comes another one. Yeah, it's pulling up here. Driver, take us to... I'm sorry, bud. This cab ain't for hire. I- I'm through for the day. Why'd you pull up in front of this hotel? I live here. <laughs> well, how do you...
you like that, he drove right into the lobby. Jack, look! Well, it serves him right. He got stuck in the revolving door. <laughs> we'll, never, we'll never get a cab standing here. It's only about eight blocks to the lake. Let's walk. Okay. Huh? Look out, kids. Look out. This taxi will splash us. What's the matter, Pop? You're too cheap to take a cab? No, driver. We've been waiting for one. All right. Hop in. Come on, fellas. Let's get in here. Okay. Take us to the Central Park Lake, bub. Okay. Are strangers here in town? Well, you'll buy... I've been living here all my life. Never been further away from Manhattan than you can go with the IRT. Where you from? Well, a whole bunch of us... Ain't no about... place like New York City, and that includes Brooklyn. <laughs> hey, uh... Any of you ever been to Brooklyn? Well, I've... And don't let anybody kid you, bud. Brooklyn's a swell dump. And, and just because... And just because he pulled them cracks about Brooklyn, I ain't never gonna read another one of Moe Coward's books. <laughs> Look, I don't like it when these wise guy writers and radio comics insult Brooklyn. Are uh, you listen to the radio much? Well, we're all so... Now, you take last Sunday on a Jack Benny program. They had an insulting crack about Brooklyn. And gee, was I glad when Fred Allen dropped in later and he'd give that Benny the whites. Now, look, driver... You see, Benny's sponsor sent Fred Allen over to read the commercial. And that Allen was a screamer. Then there's Benny. There's Benny turns to Allen and he says, Now, look, Fred, do you mean by just doing those commercials you manage to eke out a living? Well, this Allen says, Well, if it doesn't make you too unhappy, yes. And then all Benny was able to say was, hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute, driver. Why is it you do such a funny imitation of Alan, such a bad imitation of Benny? Now look, bud, don't blame me. It ain't my fault if Benny stinks. <laughs> now listen, driver. Here we are, Central Park Lake at 60 cents. Here's your 60 cents, driver. Here's your tip. There. You want to know something, bud? What? You'll do a pretty good imitation of Jack Benny yourself. <laughs> Never mind, driver. You can go. Okay, okay. So long. Well, well kids, here we are at the lake. Let's go skating. Come on, last one on the ice is a rotten egg. <laughs> I'm the first. Look at me go. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. What is it, Mary? Come back here. You forgot your skate. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, I thought I had him on. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. I want to see something. <laughs> Phil, what are you knocking on the ice for? Shh, quiet, Jackson. I'm looking for Shaky. <laughs> Kids, look at Wilson skating around there as though he owns Central Park. Yeah, what's he so stuck up about? Look at him. He just found out that Lard is back on the ration list. (laughs) Yeah. Wait a minute, I got my skates on. Watch me. I'll show you kids some real skating. Here I go. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, Phil, help me pick him up. (laughs) That was an accident. I'll show you how to skate. Watch me now. Never mind, Phil. I can get up myself. <laughs> hmm. Oh, well. Are you cold, Jack? No, Rochester sold it up for the winter. <laughs> Gosh, I can't understand. I used to be the <laughs> I used to be the best skater in Waukegan. Well, I'll try it again. There, now I've got it. Whee! <laughs> What's the matter with me? Mr. Benny, when you tripped, your hat fell off your head. Here. Thank you. And your fur piece fell off, too. <laughs> That's not a fur piece. Now give it to me. Hey, kids, kids, look. There's a fellow over there giving an exhibition. He's jumping over seven barrels. There he goes. Hey! hey. 
Say, that was really terrific. Oh, wonderful. Ah, what's so great about that? What? Watch me. I can jump over those barrels. Jack, Jack, don't be a fool. Ah, watch this. You better not try that, Jack. Don't worry about it. I was just kidding you guys, making believe I can't skate. Watch this. Jack, please. Here I go, right over those barrels. Oh, He's not over here. I can't see him either. Hey, kids, look, he's in this barrel. Mary, oh. stop peeking at me through that bunghole. <laughs> come on, fellas, let's roll it. Yeah, get your Mary. Jack, come on. Now let me out. Oh, 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 with you in Philadelphia and Boston. Thank you very, very much. From Mitchell Field, headquarters of the First Air Force, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, in every group, in every crowd, in every show, in every barracks, there's always one outstanding personality. Yes, indeed. So, it is no surprise that our little group of thespians has one of its own. And here he is, Mr. Eager Beaver of 1945, Jack Benny. Yes, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I must say I'm very pleased with that introduction you gave me. Oh, are you, Jack? Yes, sir, and I'm going to stay pleased until I find out what an eager beaver is. <laughs> I remember once you called me a sad sack, and for six months I went around bragging about it. <laughs> I even had it engraved on my card. <laughs> sad sack Benny. <laughs> I mean, a fine thing to call me. Well, Jack, how did you find out what it meant? Well, one day I tried to be sociable, so I walked up to a top sergeant and said, Hiya, sad sack. <laughs> And between sad and sack, I was flat in my back. <laughs> anyway, Don, we've been away from California about a month now. How are you enjoying the trip so far? Ah, oh, it's swell, Jack. Especially when we went ice skating last week in Central Park. <laughs> you looked so funny the way you kept falling down all the time, and I had to keep helping you up. <laughs> All right, all right. So I fell down once or twice. Once or twice? Why, I picked you up so many times, I felt like your ground crew. (laughs) You should talk, Wilson. When you fell down, you looked like a B-29 landing with its wheels up. (laughs) Then you... Then you broke through the ice, fell into the lake, and it was high tide, clear out to Sandy Hook. (laughs) So don't tell me that. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, you fellas. Now, Mary, I'm glad you got here early because these boys expect me to put on a good show for them. You know, I'm an eager beaver. You're what? An eager beaver. That's the way Don introduced me. You know? Jack, you know what that is? No, what? An eager beaver is a sad sack with a commission. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks, Don. I'll have some more of my cards engraved. (laughs) Say, Mary, Mary, how do you like it here at Mitchell Field? Oh, fine, Jack. Especially now in the wintertime with all the snow on the ground. It's wonderful, really wonderful. Uh, What's so wonderful about snow? It slows a soldier down when he's chasing a girl. (laughs) Well, that's ridiculous, Mary. The slow also snows... The snow also slows... The snow also slows down the girl when she's running away from the soldier. I know. That's what's so wonderful about it. <laughs> oh, I get it. You, want, you wanted the soldier to catch you. Well, you're pretty sharp today, aren't you, quiz kid? <laughs> I'm sharp every day, sister. Anyway, these soldiers here are all swell guys. I was out with one of them last night. We went to the wrestling matches. Oh, at the garden? No, Roseland. <laughs> 
Oh, Roseland Dance Hall. I was up there the other night. No kidding, Jack. You have fun? Oh, how can I have fun? You pay the hostess for your dance, you lead her out on the floor, you put your arms around her, then bump to the yum-tum-tum, the music's over. <laughs> well, what do you expect for a dime? Schubert's Unfinished Symphony? Mary, it isn't bad enough I get stuck with short dances, but when they were closing the place for the night, I had one ticket left over. Well, what'd you do about it? What did I do about it? I, I wasn't going to get stuck for the ticket, so I called the manager over and complained to him. Well, did he give you, did he give you your dime back? No, he just waltzed me around the floor twice and sent me home. <laughs> Boy, did he need a shave. <laughs> and the next... Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, hello. Mr. Benny. Hiya, kid. Well, Larry, you've been in New York for quite a while now. Are you still having fun? Oh, yes, oh. Mr. Benny. I'm oh. having a swell time. Thanks. Thanks to Mr. Benny? <laughs> yeah, what babes he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Larry, you mean you and Mr. Benny go out on double dates? Yeah, you know, the girl Mr. Benny goes out with has the cutest daughters. <laughs> Darn right, she's cute, and so is her mother. Anyway, kid, the boys here are waiting to hear you sing, so let's have it, huh? Okay. Hold it a minute, Larry. Come in. Mr. Benny, my name is Elma. I'm a soldier stationed here at Mitchell Field, and in my spare time, I write gangs. You know, jokes? Are you in the market for any? No, thanks. I've got a regular staff of writers. Yeah, but, Mr. Benny, you pay a lot of army camps, and I can write your special G.I. jokes. I know, Now, but... for instance, you ask me why W.C. Fields is like a Mitchell Field bus. Look, soldier. Go ahead, ask me, ask me. Okay, why is W.C. Fields like the Mitchell Field bus? Because he knows when he's loaded, but he can always handle one more. <laughs> look, look, soldier, sit down, will you? I'm trying to do a show. I'll talk to you after the program. Okay, okay, but if you lay an egg, don't brood over it. I won't, I won't. Go ahead, Larry. Let's have your song. Egg, brood. Say, that isn't bad, you know. That isn't bad. <laughs> that... that was Evelina of Song by Larry Stevens. Gee, that was swell, kid. I'm sure all of these fellas up here at Mitchell Field must be... Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Jack? Holy smoke. Here I am in New York. Oh, am I in trouble? Am I in a jam? Well, Jack, what's wrong? What's wrong? When I left Los Angeles, I forgot to notify my draft board. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Jack, calm down. You don't have to worry. But, Mary, you know how the draft board is. They want to be able to put their finger on every man that's physically fit. You know? If they put their finger on you, you fall down. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm physically fit. I'm in 1A. Here it is on my draft card, see? One A. That's A1. You took it off a bottle of meat sauce. <laughs> I did not. When they draft me, I'm going to apply for the Air Corps. The Air Corps? Oh, Jack, don't be ridiculous. You know you can't stand high altitude. Mary, altitude never bothers me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You went to the movie, saw 30 seconds over Tokyo, and your nose started to bleed. <laughs> The picture had nothing to do with it. I was sitting in the balcony. You know, that can happen to anyone. All right, Jackson. All right, Jackson. Stand back and relax. I like the soldiers, but I love them wax. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya, kid. Yeah, you've made loud entrances before, but what in the world was that? Well, I can't help it, Jackson. These wax have been sitting out there for an hour waiting for Dreamboat Harris to show up. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. What makes you think they've been waiting for you? Well, they're women, ain't they? <laughs> now, don't be so conceited. Look, Jackson, wherever I went, they kept following me and asking for my autograph. I bet I was asked to sign a thousand autographs today. Really? Yeah, and if things keep up like this, I'm going to learn how to write. <laughs> that I would like to see. Oh, Phil, you must be kidding. Don't you know how to spell your name yet? Well, I know how to spell my first name, but my second name throws me. Throws you? What's so hard about spelling Harris? It has two syllables in it. Sibibles. Phil, that's sibibles. I mean, I mean sibibles. Oh, darn it. Jack, the word is sibibles. Mary, you said what I said. Now, wait a minute, kids. Wait a minute. You're all excited. That's why you can't say it. 
But the correct pronunciation of the word is syllables. Yeah, well, now that we've got that straightened out, let's get on with the show. Hey, before... Benny. Hey, what? Benny, I got another great gag for you. Sit down, Elmer, will you please? Say, Jackson, who is this character? He's a soldier here, a gag writer. A gag writer? Yeah, that's me. Hey, get a load of this one. Elmer, will you please? Hey, did you hear did you hear about the general who refused to put a whack in a guardhouse because he just couldn't bring a deer? <laughs> <laughs> You get it, General Brigadier? Elmer, will you please sit down? <laughs> okay. okay, okay. If you want your show to be like a training film, it's all right with me. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Elmer, and I'll talk to you just as soon. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Where are you, Rochester? In your hotel room. I thought I'd better tell you there was a fellow here from Look Magazine. He said they're doing a story about you, and he asked me some questions. What'd he ask you? Well, first he wanted to know your age, so I gave him our old standard answer, 36. (laughs) Good. I hope you stuck to your answer. Oh, I did, boss. No matter how many different ways he asked me, I still said 36. That's right. What do you have to say to that? He said, when time marched on, you must have gone (laughs) A-W-O-L. Yes, he thinks he's pretty smart. What else did he ask you, Rochester? Then he got to that question that for years has been a burning issue in the public mind. What's that? Could you possibly be as cheap in person as you are on the radio? Uh Uh-huh. When he hit me with that one, I had to think fast. What did you tell him? I told him you were such a lavish spender, you were known from coast to coast as Diamond Jim Benny. Good. Good. In fact, I told him you threw your money away like it was made in Japan. boy, Rochester. And I just about had him convinced when in walked the man. What man? The man you rent your other twin bed to. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, of all the times for him to come in. It was bad, boss, bad. The first thing he did was start yelling about you overcharging him for his laundry. Oh, the nerve of that guy. He made such a noise, he woke up your riders. Then it really got noisy. Why? What happened? Well, one of them got up to turn on the light, turned on the shower instead, and almost drowned the other three. (laughs) Oh, for heaven's sake, well, what happened to the man from Look Magazine? He took one look and jumped out the window. (laughs) Out the window? Rochester, you tell him that my room was 33 stories up? No, I just let him count them on the way down. Whispering, played by Phil Harrison as Orcs. A very good, Phil. Now, kids, don't forget, after our program, we're all invited to the mess hall for a bite to eat. The mess hall? Well, I'm sorry, Jackson. I can't be there. You can't? No, there's a friend of Alice's in town, and she's here all alone, so Alice has asked me to take her out and kind of show her around. Oh, one of those things, huh? <laughs> when a wife asks her husband to take a girl out, I can imagine what the girl looks like. Huh? I'll bet eight to five she looks better than Gladys Abisko. <laughs> Mary, keep my girl out of this, will you? But she's so bow-legged. She is not bow-legged. She is, too. She looks like a donut with one bite out of it. (laughs) I don't care what Gladys Zabisco looks like. It isn't going to help you out of your troubles, Phil. What trouble? Are you kidding? While you're being dragged all over town by some dame, we'll be in the mess hall enjoying that good old army food. Hey, Phil, who is this girl you're stuck with? Ann Sheridan. Well, it serves you... What? (laughs) Whom? I mean, who? (laughs) Yes, Jackson, while you're in the mess hall enjoying that good old army food, I'm going to be dragged all over town by Ann Sheridan. Ain't that just two, two, uh, two? (laughs) All right, why didn't you tell me you were going out with Ann Sheridan? Maybe I'd want to join you. But, Jackson, the mess hall, that good old army food. I'm not hungry now. (laughs) After all, I like to go out, too. As a matter of fact, Mary can come along. We'll have a force. Well, I don't know. I promised Ann Sheridan... Well, I'm sure Ann won't mind if Mary and I come along. 
In fact, you and Mary will make a very nice couple. Wait, wait a, a minute. minute. Wait, wait a, a minute. minute. Why, Mary, Phil, I'm surprised at you. You two act like you wouldn't go out with each other. Well, it ain't that at all, Jackson. Of course not. I don't mind going out with Phil. And I don't mind going out with Mary. Well, then we ought to have a lot of fun. I don't mind going out with Ann Sheridan. <laughs> Hey, I've been here so long, I wouldn't mind going out with Gladys Abisco. <laughs> oh, it's you, Elmer. Yeah, where is Bowlegs? She's not here. Now, sit down. Look, Jackson, Ann Sheridan is expecting me to take her out, so when she gets here, you lay off. Okay, okay, Phil. You can take Ann Sheridan, and I'll take Mary. And, Phil, as long as we're each taking out a girl, I don't want to get stuck with the check, and... I don't want you to get stuck with the check. So tonight, it's share and share alike. Well, that's a good idea, Jackson. Sure. When you split it four ways, nobody gets hurt. <laughs> Since we're going out on a double date, let's synchronize our watches. Huh, fellas? Huh? Anyway, Phil, we... come in. Why, Annie. Ann Sheridan. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hello, Filthy. Jack, I'm sorry to bust in like this, but I've got a date with Phil. I know, I know. We'll all be together. You see, Mary and I are going with you. Oh, Mary, hello. Hello, Angie. You're looking swell. Say, Annie, I never saw you. Oh, a... you look good, too, Mary. And I love that dress you're wearing. Oh, it's just a little thing I picked up at Tax Fifth Avenue. Yes, it's over Say, on Ann, the... I've been wanting to ask you, where in the world do you get your hair done? It always looks so nice. Yeah, it always looks Isn't just... Isn't that funny, Mary? I was going to ask you the same thing, because I've always admired your hair. Well, Mary you always know, I gets... usually get mine done. Pierre. Well, Pierre's, you know. Well, I get the... mine done at Antoine's, and they have the most wonderful stylist. Well, Antoine's. Now, well, you know Pierre's. They have a girl, right? Now, wait girl. a minute. Wait. Let me get into this conversation. <laughs> All right, Jack. Where do you get your hair done? I don't know. Rochester takes it someplace. <laughs> Now, Annie, I don't think it's nice for you to come here and have a whole big conversation with Mary while Phil and I stand here like dopes. Yes, and, and my feelings are hurt. Oh, I'm sorry, Phil. I didn't mean to do it. Well, I can't help it. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> oh, Phil, see, you don't mean that, do you? Yes, I do, and I feel terrible. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Filthy. Come here, let me put my arms around you and give you a great big kiss. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Crank it up! Crank it up! Now put that out! Now! Hmm. How'd you like it, Annie? Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> Fine goings on. Jackson, what are you mad about? Well, my feelings were hurt just as much as yours. <laughs> oh, Jack. I can't help it if my feelings are hurt. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll put my arms around you and give you a... Mary, break. you keep out of it. <laughs> After all, it was Anne who hurt my feelings, not you. What'd you say, Jack? I said I feel terrible. <laughs> and I think you ought to do something about it. All right, Jack. I'll send you a telegram of apology. I don't want to be kissed by a boy on a bicycle. <laughs> anyway, you could treat me better than that, Anne. You know, after all, we made a picture together. Remember George Washington slept here? Oh, Sure. You know, when I was on my overseas tour, that picture was playing in China. In China? What, what town? Chongqing. Really? Well. Jack, come back here. That was three months ago. <laughs> oh, oh. Let him go, Ann. He wants to get there before the prices change. <laughs> I do not. I just got excited, that's all. Say, Phil. Phil, if we're going places tonight, we'd better get started. Okay, Annie. You see, a girlfriend of mine is waiting outside, and we've got to find somebody for her. Uh, did I... Did I hear you right, Annie? A girlfriend of... Of yours is waiting outside? Yes. Oh, and you're, uh... Looking for someone to go out with her? Well, I'm your boy. Let's go. Mary, instead of going out with me, you can go out with one of the pilots here. Thanks, Jack. I feel like I've just been taken off a of KP. 
Oh, oh Ann, while I'm getting my hat and coat, have your girlfriend come in, will you? Okay, Jack. Yeah. Oh, Madeline, Madeline, will you step in here a minute? I want you to meet the man you're going out with tonight. Wait a minute, Ann. Did you say her name was Madeline? That's me, Madeline Nussbaum, if you please. <laughs> Why, why, you're Mrs. Nussbaum. You were expecting maybe Jesse Jones. <laughs> no, no. But... My, my, what a surprise to be meeting you, Mr. Benny. A surprise? Yes. I know I'm going on a blind date, but you are opening mine eyes. <laughs> But Mrs. Mrs. Newsbaum, how do you happen to be with Ann Sheridan? Oh, she's coming to my restaurant frequently for a small order of chopped chicken liver, Hollywood style. A Hollywood style? Yes, the liver is coming from a chicken wearing dark glasses. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about this date tonight. Come on, Annie, let's go. Okay, Phil. Hurry up, Jack. Well, Phil, you and Annie run along. I don't think that oh, I can be... Oh, come on, come on, take Jackie Mrs. Newsbaum, I've got a date with Miss Livingston. Oh, Mary, come Mary! Come on, come on. Don't be an eagle beagle. <laughs> Mary, Mary, where are come you? Come on, Jackie Bond, we're late already. Mrs. Newsbaum, stop pulling my arm. Oh, Mary! Come on, come on, go have fun. Mary! Give me lands, lots of land, need the status, guys, I buy. Mrs. Newsbaum! Don't fencing me, yeah! Please stop dragging me, Mrs. Newsbaum! Well, fellas and girls, we had a swell day here at Mitchell Field, and thanks very much for inviting us. And next Sunday night, we'll be with you again broadcasting from the Navy Hospital at St. Albans. Good night, Joni. This is the National Broadcasting Company. From St. Albans Naval Hospital in Long Island, the Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since we're broadcasting from St. Albans Hospital, which is on Long Island, which is near New York, which is near Brooklyn, I bring you one of them bums, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I thought that was a very cute introduction, but it so happens that our broadcast isn't coming from Brooklyn. And besides, I happen to be a bum from... I mean, I happen to be a native of Waukegan. <laughs> well, that's right, Jack. You were born in Waukegan, weren't you? Yes, sir. Waukegan, Illinois. What a thriving metropolis. What buildings. What skyscrapers. What... Wait a minute, Jack. The tallest building in Waukegan is only three stories high. Yes, sir. What skyscrapers? What activity? Jack, what... how can a three-story building be a skyscraper? Because Waukegan has a very low sky. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> anyway, I love Waukegan. You know, in fact, I didn't leave there till I completed my education. Oh, really, Jack? What college did you go to? I didn't go to college. You know, you don't have to go to college. Well, to uh, how long did you go to high school? I didn't go to high school. <laughs> See, it's, it's not necessary to go to high school. Well, for heaven's sakes, Jack, how long did you go to grammar school? Twelve years. You thought you had me there, didn't you, Bob? <laughs> And I would have gone longer than that, but I was drafted into the Navy. But, Jack, I happen to know that in the last war they didn't draft men into the Navy. Well, I wasn't exactly drafted, Don. Here's what happened. You see, my father had a clothing store, and he sent me to Great Lakes Naval Training Station to deliver six sailor suits. Uh-huh. But when I got there, an officer asked me to try on one of those sailor suits for size. And what happened? Size didn't show up, and I had to wear it for the next three years. <laughs> I like being in the Navy. I don't know. It was so... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm a nurse stationed here at St. Albans Hospital in the research department. Would you mind opening your mouth and saying, ah? Not at all. Ah. Uh, uh, wider. Ah. Uh, wider, please. Ah. Wait 
a minute. What are you looking for? A place to hold the USO dance. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, that's the silliest thing I ever... <laughs> Don, Don, what are you laughing at? Oh, boy, did she make a sucker out of you. <laughs> hmm. Don, there's an old... Don, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, when big fat announcer laugh at man who pay him, announcer soon lose pay that keep him big fat. <laughs> Because that nurse was pretty, you didn't have to... Hiya, come... boys. It's anchors away because Harris is here and he's G-O-K. G-O-K? Yes. G-O-K. G-O-K. What's that? Oh, Harris, you're just like a scow, so pull up your stern and take a bow. Phil. Oh, Harris, you're like oh, a Pacific. You're Phil. Harris so wavy and you're so terrific. Phil. Yahoo! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Jackson. When did you come in? I've been here all the time. And, Phil, what's that new one you pulled on us? What does that mean, G-O-K? Well, that's the title the doctors gave me around here. But G-O-K, what does it mean? I don't know. I gave a pint of blood this morning, and that's what they wrote on the bottle. Oh, oh, well, that probably means the type. But, Phil, I can't understand them accepting your blood. What are you talking about? I gave eight pints of blood already, and they want more. Well, don't feel so proud. They're only using it for back rubs. <laughs> Tell you some medical science has certainly made great progress since the last war. You know, we didn't have plasma when I was in the Navy. You're right, Jack. The scientists and doctors have been wonderful. Them nurses ain't bad either. <laughs> You're not kidding, Phil. Those nurses do a great job and they need a lot more of them. Say, Jackson, I meant to ask you, when you were in the Navy, uh, what was your rank? Well, I was a seaman, fourth class. <laughs> Yes, sir. Seaman, fourth class, what's that? That's an ensign with the air let out of his chest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Stevens, our singer. Well, oh, Larry, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Mr. Benny. Come on in over here. Hey, they like you here, kid. What are you going to sing for the boys? Well, it's called An Irish Lullaby. Oh, yes. My mother used to sing that to me all the time. Go ahead. That was... That was... It's an Irish Lullaby sung by Larry Stevens. Larry, that was beautiful. Thank you. And the orchestra sounded good, too. Phil. Phil. Phil, where are you? Here I am, Jackson. I just stepped out for a minute. Are you ready for me to lead Larry's song now? Phil, we just finished the song. No wonder the music sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was that fellow that conducted the orchestra? Hey, buddy, who are you? I'm the janitor here. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, anyway, now we can get out. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, you fellas. Mary, this is the first time you've been so late. Where were you? I was outside talking to a couple of sailors. Well, Mary, I hope you didn't overdo it like the last time we played at a naval base. You talked to a sailor, and in five minutes, his whole face was marked with lipstick. Jack, sailors don't refer to those marks as lipstick. They call them campaign ribbons. <laughs> Mary, campaign ribbons are something you get after a battle. Well, I put up a little fight. <laughs> How's the show going? Oh, great. You should have been here. I pulled a wonderful gag before. I said they used Phil's blood for back rubs. <laughs> well, you're a fine one to talk. What do you mean? You donated a pint of blood. They gave it to a soldier. It made him so cheap, he shot a Jap, then ran after him to get the bullet back. <laughs> they well, they don't call me Get the Let Out Benny for nothing. <laughs> I love that. I wouldn't take that gag out for anything. Now, there's a joke I intended to leave in the script. I love that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, I, Jack Benny, will play a violin solo. My selection... Oh, say, Jackson, I saw you play the fiddle in that picture, uh, Hollywood Canteen. Oh, did you, Phil? I'm going to see it tonight. Oh, no, Jack, not again. Yes, Mary, and you're going with me. But, Jack, we saw it last night for the twelfth time. I know, but who can enjoy it under those circumstances? Why? What happened, Jack? Oh, I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, Jackson, tell us about it. Well, I had a day to take Mary to see the picture. It was early in the evening, and I was in my hotel getting ready to go out. In fact, at the moment, I was taking a bath. You know? Oh. 
Oh, boy, there's nothing like a good hot bath. Showers are all right, but if you want to relax, soak in a tub. Hmm, just look at my feet. How'd they get so dirty? I better scrub them. I wonder what it could be. It doesn't seem to... Oh, darn it, I forgot to take my socks off. <laughs> Oh, well, you can't think of everything. Say, boss, I just finished, finished ironing your shirts and your shorts. Good. See, this water's nice and warm. Do you want me to get you some socks or will you wear the ones you have on? Don't be silly. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You with that bathing cap on, you look like Charlie's hand at the seaside. <laughs> what do you wear that thing for, boss? Well, you don't think I want to get my hair wet, do you? No, and you won't unless you splash some water into the top bureau drawer. <laughs> Rochester, stop with that. Now pick up the washcloth and scrub my back. Okay. Ah, that feels good. Keep it up. Say, Rochester, sitting in this water reminds me. Did I ever tell you about the time I was in the Navy and they gave me a medal because I was... Thousands of times, boss. Thousands of times. <laughs> Oh. But you tell a different every time, so go ahead. No, I'll think up a new... I mean, never mind. If you're not interested in hearing about me when I was a sailor, it's okay. I'm sorry, boss. What a sailor I was. I joined the Navy, and it was promotion after promotion. In no time, I was a rear admiral commanding the ship, sailing the seven seas. And I remember one time... Rochester, stop rippling the water. It's making me seasick. <laughs> Now, where was I? You were a seasick rear admiral. <laughs> Never mind. Now, get busy and finish washing my bag. Okay. You and me, we sweat and strain, working all day and rack with pain. Rochester. Tote that brush, lift that soap. Sometimes I wish I was with Bob Hope. <laughs> No, every week you want to be with somebody else. Last week you wanted to be with Pipper McGee. <laughs> Love that man. <laughs> no, you like everybody. Now stand back while I... There's the door. You see who it is and I'll dress in here. Yes, sir. Do you want me to get your girdle, boss? Girdle? Rochester, I've asked you not to call it that. Oh, yes. You want me to get your foundation garment, boss? <laughs> No, I won't need it. I'm going to wear my baggy tweeds. <laughs> now go. Hurry up and see who's at the door. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come in. Well, thank you, Rochester. Where's Mr. Benny? He'll be out in a minute. He's getting dressed. Oh. Hello, Mary. I'll be ready as soon as I get my hat and coat. Here we are. Where are you going, boss? We're going to see my picture, Hollywood Canteen. But, boss, you were there this afternoon. I don't care. I want to see how I look at night. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. 62 stars, and he calls it his picture. All right, all right, come on, come on. What a crowd. I never thought we'd get to the theater. Yeah, Mary, look at that line of people waiting to buy tickets to the box office. And gosh, they're all sailors. Jack, they're not waiting to buy tickets. That's the overflow of the St. Albans pay line. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, here's the theater line. Let's get on the end of it. Okay. Pardon me, mister. Stop your shoving. Stop your shoving. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to get on the ticket line. Okay, okay. Say, mister, have you read what the movie critics said about this picture? Nope. Well, they said, quote, Hollywood Canteen, jammed with a star-studded cast, is one of Hollywood's finest pictures. Among the many entertaining performers are Betty Davis, Eddie Cantor, Barbara Stanwyck, Jack Carson, Jane Wyman, and Jack Benny, who personally contributes one of the most hilarious bits in the picture by his violin... Eh, uh, shut up! <laughs> what? I don't care what the reviews say. I'm just going in here to get out of the cold. <laughs> How do you like that fresh guy, Mary? He can't even be sociable. I only try to tell him what the critics said. Well, don't take it to heart, Jack, and close your scrapbook. Okay. Oh, Mary, look, isn't that cute? That little boy is trying to buy a ticket. He can hardly reach the box office window. Oh, Sonny. I'll help you, Sonny. Jack, stop calling him Sonny. That's Mayor LaGuardia. <laughs> Oh, darn it, I always make that mistake. How many, please? Huh? Oh, yes, miss. Were there two passes left here for me? 
I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm the star of this picture. Well, I'll see. Um, I'm sorry, but there are no passes for you, Miss Davis. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. I'm not Betty Davis. I'm Jack Benny. That's who I am, Jack Benny. Jack, she believes you. Stop opening your scrapbook. <laughs> All right. Come on, Jack. Be a sport and buy two tickets. All right. Here you are, miss. Two tickets, please. Yes, sir. Uh, here's your tickets and here's your change. Wait a minute, sister. Wait a minute. You charge me evening prices instead of matinee prices. But, Mr. Benny, our prices change at 5 o'clock and it's 7 o'clock now. So what? I come from California and it's only 4 o'clock out there. <laughs> And another thing... Jack, Jack, look who's coming down the street. It's Fred Allen in Portland. Gosh, I haven't seen Porty in a long time. Well, I'm not going to stand here and see Fred Allen. Come on, let's go inside. Will you? Watch out, Portland. The sidewalks are pretty slippery. Don't worry, Mr. Allen. I've got hold of your arm. <laughs> Gosh, look what's playing at this. Well, what do you know? Benny's picture. They waited till they put the lights out on Broadway, and then they sneaked it into town. <laughs> Come on. Let's go in and see it, Mr. Allen. Now, Portland, we're not on the radio now, so stop calling me Mr. Allen. We've been eased out of more hotels that way. <laughs> And anyway, who wants to see Benny's picture? I've seen more entertaining pictures tattooed on a sailor's arm. Oh, Fred, you're off the air now. Why do you keep on hating Jack? It's because he's so jealous. Now, you won't believe this, Portland, but when other entertainers become famous, Benny instantly tries to steal their stuff. Really? Of course. You remember when Fitz, uh, Fritz Chrysler became... Uh, I thought there was no R in there. <laughs> Uh, when Fritz, uh, it's another month, I thought it was... When Fritz Chrysler... <laughs> when Fritz Chrysler became famous, I had it mixed up with an old oyster opener, are you? <laughs> when Fritz Chrysler became famous... When Chrysler became fair famous, then he took up the violin. When Sinatra became popular, then he took a course in malnutrition. <laughs> Do you remember last year when Benny had pneumonia? Yes. He caught it trying to imitate Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> Benny's chest is so narrow, pneumonia had to set in sideways. <laughs> well, Fred, if Jack tries to remain popular, then at least you've got to admit that he uses his head. Well, of course he uses his head. He's got to have something to separate his neck from his toupee. <laughs> does with his old toupee. Oh, who knows? Maybe he gives them to Gravel Gertie. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're always picking on Jack. If it isn't his hair, you call him a tightwad. Now, wait a minute. I didn't start that rumor. Even the tightwads call Benny a tightwad. <laughs> Why, I remember one summer when Jack was out on a dude ranch, he kept his money in a wildcat's mouth. <laughs> Frank Buck had to go with him if he wanted to spend anything. <laughs> anyway, Portland, to show you to show you I'm a sport, I'll take you in to see Benny's picture. Here's the box office. Oh, Miss, Miss. Uh, yes, sir. How uh, many, please? Forgive me for interrupting your nap, Miss, but I I'd like two tickets. Yes, sir. Uh, that's two dollars and forty cents. A dollar twenty a ticket to see Jack Benny's picture? But there are sixty-two stars in the picture, sir. Oh, sixty. That makes Benny cost me two cents. <laughs> Brother, inflation is sure here. Come on, boy. <laughs> the picture's pretty good so far, Jack. Uh-huh. You come on near the end of the picture, don't you? Uh-huh. Jack, put out that flashlight and stop reading your scrapbook. Okay, but look at the review I got in the St. Joe Gazette. Ah, they love me in St. Joe. Jack, be quiet. 
The people who just sat down behind us want to see the picture. And stop bobbing around. Mary, if they don't like uh, the... Pardon me, mister. What do you want, bud? It's kind of hard for me to see the picture. <laughs> Will you please do me a favor and remove your head? <laughs> A wise guy. Who do you think you're talking to? Jackie, boy, you're losing your temper. Oh, it's you, Alan. Why, Jack, you seem surprised to see me. I am surprised. I thought that after you saw your shadow on Friday, you crawled back into your hole. <laughs> You know, Jack, if I didn't have such great respect for old age, I'd punch you right in the nose. Atta boy, hit him, Fred. Listen, Al, if you start anything with me, I'll slug you right back. Atta boy, hit him, Fred. Mary, you're on my side. Oh, Jack, Jack, look, this is the part of the picture you're in. Quiet, quiet. Everybody shut up. This is the part I came here to see. Madam, will you please make that baby keep quiet? I can't hear the picture. Why don't you keep quiet yourself? I can't hear my baby. What? Attaboy, hit him with the baby, lady. <laughs> Madam, you have more right to bring a baby to the theater. Imagine a man complaining because an itsy bitsy baby cries. Just because it's cold and cold. It's all your fault, Alan. I'm sitting here minding my own business and going to sit up. When you had to stop the picture, I didn't have the last thing I do. I'm going to say I don't care about the whole thing. See my pic? How do you like that? The lights are on and the picture is over. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, let's stay and see the newsreel. I'm not in the newsreel. <laughs> now let's get out of here. Thanks, thanks very much, fellas, for inviting us here to the St. Albans Naval Hospital. We enjoy doing our program for you. And next Sunday night, folks, we'll be broadcasting from the Glenview Naval Air Station, Glenview, Illinois. And two weeks from today, we'll be in good old St. Joe. Ah, St. Joe. They love me there. It's not you. It's me. Oh. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Glenview Naval Air Station at Glenview, Illinois, Jack Benny. With Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny celebrates his birthday. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday, Jack Benny, so don't fence me in, sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> that I put in extra. Continue, Don. Go ahead. As you all know, sometimes a baby is born with a silver spoon in its mouth. Sometimes a baby is born with a birthmark on its knee. That's right. But tonight, we bring you the only baby that was born with a toupee on its head. <laughs> And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I wasn't born with a toupee. It just happened that I was such a cute baby, when the doctor left, he patted me on the head and his fur-lined glove came off. <laughs> For the next eight years, I wore the fingers down over my forehead for bangs. My mother, my mother thought the thumb was a cowlick. <laughs> no kidding, huh? Well, Jack, when did you finally find out that that thing you were wearing on your head was a glove? Uh, the first time I went to get a haircut. The barber looked at my head and asked me if I wanted hair tonic or saddle soap. <laughs> anyway, Don... You're right about one thing. Next Wednesday is my birthday. Well, Jack, we've done a lot of kidding about your age, but seriously, uh, how old are you? You're right, Don. We have done a lot of kidding. <laughs> but when a man reaches a certain age, there's no use denying him. In fact, Don, there's a satisfaction in knowing you have reached that age in a distinguished and dignified manner. Well, it's no wonder so many people have such a deep admiration for you, Jack. It takes a man of high character to accept growing old so gracefully. Thank you. So tell me, Jack, how old are you? 36. 
And now, fellas, since we're brought... Wait to... a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Nothing wrong, kid? All I can say is you certainly act a lot older than 36. What? Why, the minute it started snowing, you chased all over town trying to buy preheated underwear. <laughs> Now, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. In the first place, there's no such thing as preheated underwear. You gotta hold it in front of the fireplace like everybody else. <laughs> preheated underwear. Don, a young man in a 30... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Ray, I called for you at the hotel, Mary, but you were gone. How'd you get here? Oh, I came over in one of those yellow perils. One of those... One of those yellow perils? What's that? Uh, Chicago taxi cab. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, I was a little confused, Mary. Uh, you see, a yellow peril is also a training plane, and I knew you wouldn't be coming over in one of those. Well, this may surprise you, Jack. While you were rehearsing yesterday, a handsome pilot took me up in one of those training planes. Really? Yeah. What training? <laughs> I think I know what you mean. This pilot was really nice, though. He had a medal for bravery, for sharpshooting, and for flying. Well. He also had a medal for good behavior, but I made him give that back. Oh. One of those guys, huh? He got you up in the airplane, then you had to kiss him. I didn't have to kiss him. He was gentleman enough to open the door and offer me a parachute. Okay, Mary, but if you're giving away any kisses, just remember that Wednesday is my birthday. <laughs> and Mary, Jack says he's only 36 years old. Why, Jack Benny, do you expect... Well, that's that... all I am, and I can prove it. Oh, Jack. Well, look, my last birthday was in 1944. Is that right? Yes, 1944. And I was born in... Yes? I was born in Waukegan. <laughs> and that makes me 36. Makes you 36? Jack, how does being born in Waukegan make you 36? It's simple arithmetic. My last birthday was in 1944. I was born in Waukegan. Waukegan has eight letters, and eight from 44 is 36. <laughs> Oh, brother. What are you all brother about? I celebrated my last birthday in June. Mary. Mary. My mother was born in September. My father was born in Chicago. Now, Mary. Chicago look. from September leaves two, and two from June is four, so that makes you four months old. Mary. So throw me over your shoulder and burp me, Daddy. I'm a baby. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary, there are some things that people just don't... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Dr. Fenchel from St. Joe. St. Joe? What do you know? I'm going to be in St. Joe next week. I know, but two years ago when you were supposed to go there, you canceled your trip because you caught pneumonia. <laughs> Remember? That's right. That's right, I did. Well, this year, the people of St. Joe sent me here to make sure that you stay well. Uh, do you mind if I open your shirt? My shirt? Not at all. <laughs> Hmm. What cheap material. <laughs> Look, Doctor. Uh, quiet. I'm going to tap your ribs with this mallet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> doctor. Uh, hold your head still, Mr. Benny. Hold your head still. I want to look into your ear. My ear? Well, okay, but make it snappy, will you? Very well. Uh, Mr. Benny, would you mind holding your hand over your other ear? The light's coming in. <laughs> Are you sure? That'll be all. The examination is over. Goodbye. What a crazy doctor. Imagine him coming in and... Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy birthday. <laughs> hey, kid, I'm going to throw a little birthday party Wednesday and you're invited. Well, thanks, Mr. Benny. You know, my father celebrated his birthday yesterday. Really, Larry? How old is he? Well, he's 54, but he tells everybody he's 42. Oh, oh. How old are you... How old are you, Mr. Benny? Well... He's 23, but he tells everybody he's 36. <laughs> Mary, 23. Gee, Miss Livingston, now I'm sorry I'm 22. Why? Well, look what's going to happen to me in just one year. <laughs> Don't worry about it, kid. Well, let's have you... Hey, your... Larry, I meant to ask you, how are you standing the cold weather out here in Chicago? Oh, I'm quite comfortable, Miss Livingston, thanks to Mr. Benny. Thanks to Mr. Benny? Yeah, he's letting me wear his... Larry. Hat. Well, they're a little too big for me around the seat, but they're warm. <laughs> Jack, what is he talking about? Nothing, nothing. Go ahead and sing, kid. It's the last time I ever lend my preheated underwear to anybody. I don't know. Very good. Well, well, well. Now, well, you belong to my heart, sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, Larry. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes, kid. Did you see that article in Collier's magazine that Larry Adler wrote? In Collier's? Yes, it's all about you and your overseas trip. All about me? Well, I'm sorry I didn't see it. And there's a big picture of you in it, too, Mr. Benny. Uh, a picture of me? <laughs> say, now that you mention it, I... 
think I did see it somewhere. What do you mean, somewhere? You got in every wall in your hotel room papered with it. I have not. You have to. You <laughs> even got them pasted in the elevator shaft, and when people ride up and down, it'll look like moving pictures. <laughs> Now, Mary. And how you ever got him into the powder room, I'll never... Mary, that... <laughs> Anyway, Larry, thanks for... Listen, stop laughing. You got paid for this show. <laughs> anyway, Larry, thanks for mentioning it. And don't forget my birthday party. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, fellas. Let's straighten up and fly around. Phil, Phil, I'm glad you got here. I just invited Larry to my birthday party. I want you to come, too. Hey, that's right. Wednesday is your birthday. Yeah? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So bring out the bottle. I've got the cart screw. Oh. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, Bill, that's pretty good. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Many happy returns, Jackson. Thanks. And say, look, I ain't much on speech making, but I hope you uh, live to be as old as you look. Oh, you like that, huh? You like that? Hey, Phil, what kind of a crack was that? Well, I was only kidding, Jackson. In fact, I got the boys in the orchestra to all chip in and buy you a present, and here it is. Present? Oh, gee, isn't that nice? A copy of what every young boy should know. <laughs> Deluxe edition. <laughs> hey, Jackson. Huh? Jackson, uh, uh, turn to page 16. Uh, page 16? Yeah, 16. Go ahead, turn to it. Okay. Guys, hey, this, this book doesn't mince words, does it? No, sir. What does it say, Jack? Don't play with matches. <laughs> what a book. Thanks, Bill. Say, Jackson, talking about your birthday, you were born somewhere around here, weren't you? Yes, sir, in Waukee, and I'm going to invite a lot of my friends and relatives from there to my party. My sister Florence, my cousin Flip Gordon, Ali Imerman, Vidy Talcott, Frank Wallin, the mayor... Then I'm going to invite Jerome Morrison, Julia Sinekin, and... No, I'm not going to invite Julia. But when we went to school, he used to pull my curls. Well, he couldn't do it now with a pair of tweezers. Oh, yeah, you'd be surprised, sister, what's under that glove. <laughs> anyway, all my old friends are going to be at the party. There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, where are you? I'm in St. Joe, boss. Oh, long distance. I'm glad you got in okay. Oh, not exactly okay. I had a little financial trouble on the train. Well, you shouldn't have. I gave you the money for the trip. I know, boss, but you figure things a little too close. <laughs> what do you mean? At the station, I bought a package of gum and weighed myself. Uh-huh. And when I went to buy my ticket, I was exactly six cents short. <laughs> Well, it's your own fault for spending money like that. What did you do then? Well, I got on the train anyway. And if it hadn't been for the extreme kindness of some sailors, I wouldn't have had enough money for my fare. Why, did they lend it to you? No, they faded me. Rochester, do you mean that you started a crap game with some sailors? Oh, no, boss. No, I didn't start it. You see, there were seven sailors standing around in a circle discussing Einstein's theory of relativity. <laughs> Uh-huh. Then someone dropped a pair of dice and Einstein went A-W-O-L. But, Rochester, you didn't have to get in the game. I know, but one of the boys said shoot, and even I couldn't refuse that call to battle station. <laughs> well, there's no use talking about it anymore. How are things in St. Joe? Are the people excited about my coming? Excited? Boss, they're panicking. What? Rochester, don't be silly. They love me in St. Joe. Well, I heard they've even got pictures of me all over town. Oh, they have, boss. They have. How do they look? Oh, the pictures look good, but those words, dead or alive, are definitely upsetting. <laughs> now, Rochester, I know you're making that up. Anyway, I'll see you there next Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I was only kidding. People here are all waiting to see you. In fact, they're here from all over the country. They are? Yes, sir. From Nashville to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe, wherever the four winds blow. They love me there. So long, Rochester. Goodbye. Good old Rochester. Play, Phil. The Hollywood Canteen, played by Phil Ayers Orchestra. Phil, your band number sounds especially good tonight. Is this your regular orchestra? No, this is a bunch of musicians I picked up in Chicago. Oh, oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I got them at the stockyard. <laughs> the stockyard? Yes, I figured if I got them out there, they'd bring their horns with them. <laughs> oh, there 
Paris, you clever kid. Go button your cuffs and square your lid, you boy, you. Little girl. Now, let's get back to our own show. Ladies and gentlemen, since we're at a naval air station tonight, for our feature attraction, we will present a dramatic sketch of the sea entitled, Boy, Was I Seasick, or You Can't Take It With You. <laughs> now, Mary... Mary, there are only men on this ship, so you can't be in our play. Well, I want to be in it. I can't help it. There's no part for you. Well, you let me be in it, or I'll tell all these fellas that when you were in the Navy, you saluted a barber pole because it had stripes on it. I didn't salute. I just said hello. Well, Rimley liked that. Now, let's get back to our play. As the scene opens, I, Captain Jack McBenny, commanding officer of an aircraft carrier, am standing on the bridge of my ship, the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. <laughs> Wipe your chin. Quiet. <laughs> we are on the high seas, knifing silently through the night for a secret a destination. <laughs> Captain McBenny, what is it, Ensign Harris? Well, we've been at sea 24 hours now, and it's time to open the sealed orders. I have them here. Here they are. Sealed orders? Good. I'll open them. Boom. From Captain Carson. Yeah, this must be it. <laughs> yeah. To Captain McBenny, commanding officer of the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. Somewhere in the Pacific. What does it say? It says, load supplies, move for Tokyo. Load supplies, move for Tokyo. <laughs> well, they can depend on us, Captain. This is the best aircraft carrier in the fleet. You said it. Say, what's our longitude? 62 degrees south. Our latitude? 48 degrees. What's our altitude? Altitude. <laughs> Certainly. You know the last plane that took off? Yes. We're still tied to it. <laughs> We ought to watch those things. Yeah. Well, Captain, here we are now. <laughs> 3,000 feet over Albuquerque. That's right. I haven't been this high since last night at the Silhouette Club. <laughs> Anson Harris, we are now entering a blackout zone. Tell them, Andy, mustn't show a light. Those are orders. Oi, oi, sir. That's aye, aye. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, men, we must take any chances. Turn out all the lights. Why, can the enemy see us? No, but the audience can. <laughs> How did that wave get on deck? <laughs> Carry out your orders, Harris. I want total darkness. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What a ship. The crow's nest is full of eggs. <laughs> Listen, Murph. There's no crow's nest on this ship. Well, I'll lay eight to five on the eggs. Never mind that. I'm your superior officer. Salute me. Come on, salute me. Okay. Well? Well, here I am again, 3,000 feet over Albuquerque. <laughs> hey, Captain. What? Isn't the captain supposed to stay with the ship? Certainly. Well, come on down, bub. Come on down. <laughs> now, men, we're faced with a very great situation. We're on an important mission and a lot depends on it. Aye, aye, aye sir. sir. Somewhere out there is a pack of submarines, and they're searching for us. But are we afraid? Of course not. Okay, men, to your battle station. Anti-aircraft. There's the enemy. Fire. Oh, boy, we got 200 planes. Jack, those were pigeons. Those were pigeons. You're still over Albuquerque. Oh, God. We'll finish the sketch in St. Joe. They love me there. in St. Joe. Perhaps some of you may have forgotten the story behind this great event, so I'd like to take you back about three years to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. Jack was comfortably sitting in his big easy chair reading his scrapbook, while Rochester was straightening up the house and singing a popular song of the day. My mama done told me when I was in knee pants, my mama done told me son. A woman who sweet talk and give you the big eye. But when the sweet talk is done, a woman's a two-faced, a worrisome thing who leads you to sing the blues in the night. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe, they love me there. That's how it all started. And now, three years later, here he is in person. 
St. Joe's favorite adopted son, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And folks, I want to tell you, this is the greatest reception I ever got in my life. Okay, I'm so proud, my chest is almost out to my underwear. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, I don't blame you, Jack. Here we are during our program in the largest auditorium in town. They've even given you their hometown band for the broadcast. That's right, Don. Is it any wonder that I'm so happy to be here in good old St. Joe? Hmm. Uh, where were we, Don, before You're we were You're just saying how happy you are to be here, Jack. Oh, yes. What a welcome I got when I arrived. You should have been with me, Don. The train pulled into a siding, they slid open the door, and we all ran down the ramp. <laughs> how, how happy we Jack, were. Jack, did you say you ran down a ramp? Yes. How happy we were. Wait a minute, Jack. Who ran down the ramp? You and who else? Me and the cows. <laughs> How happy we Jack, were. Jack, do you mean to say you arrived here on a cattle train? Cattle train? Certainly. When you saw all those cows, what did you think it was? Well, I... I didn't exactly know, but I did feel they were overdoing that share the ride business. <laughs> Boy, were we crowded. But, Jack, I can't understand you're making the mistake of getting on a cattle train. Didn't anybody stop you? Yes, yes, some fresh cowboy. He opened my shirt, stamped grade A on my chest, and herded me in. <laughs> and with those sharp sticks. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how I got here as long as I'm in good old St. Joe. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. For heaven's sake, fellas, you don't have to play that tune every time I say... I didn't say it. Now, look, fellas, I know you're glad to see me, but you don't have to blow your brains out. After all, we're trying to do... Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody. Hello, Mary. How are you? Say, say, Mary, they love you here, too. Isn't that nice? It sure is, Jack. But I've never seen a town go all off for anyone like this town has gone for you. Ah, it sure is exciting, Mary. Did you see those big banners all over town that say, Welcome, Jack Benny. Three cheers for Jack Benny. And we love you, Jack Benny. Did you see them? See them? I was with you in Chicago when you had them painted. Mary, you're just making that up. You know very well they love me here. What about that parade that was given in my honor? Jack, was that parade in your honor? Certainly it was. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Selling hot dogs. <laughs> Mary. And you got mustard all over the chief of police. Well, if Chief Swepson didn't mind, why should you? Anyway, you know, you... John! John, what are you laughing at? Oh, I was just thinking about Jack. He came into town on a cattle train. Jack, you didn't. Well, it was all a mistake. By the time I found out, we were here already, you know. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Jack. Do you mean to say you rode in a cattle car without even knowing it? Mary, when I ride on a train, I don't look around to see who's sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did get suspicious when I rang for the porter and he came in on all fours. <laughs> You mean it was a cow? I don't know, but I asked for milk and never got such quick service in all my life. <laughs> you mean you got it? Right in the eye, sister. Right in the eye. <laughs> Mary, you're making fun of me. No, Jack, I think you're awfully cute. Anyone could have made that mistake. Certainly. Well, all right, Jack, I'm convinced that it was all a mistake. Well, if you'd stayed with me, you wouldn't have had to ride on a cattle train. Don, if I'm going to ride with a load of beef, what's the difference what train it's on? 
And I wish Larry would come in so we, we would stop this silly talk. Hello, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Hello, Larry. How are you? of that reception, kid. Isn't that a wonderful audience out there? Oh, it certainly is, Mr. Benny. And you know what, Larry? Everybody that came in here to see this show had to give a pint of blood. Well, did it help you get over your cold? <laughs> they didn't give it to me. They gave it to the Red Cross. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. That's all right, kid. Anybody could have made that mistake. Like coming here on a cattle train. Certainly. Say, Larry, have you been having any fun here in town? Oh, I sure have, Miss Livingston. I've been seeing all the sights, and this afternoon I even visited Jesse James' house. You did? Yes, but Mr. James wasn't home, so I left. <laughs> Look, kid, Jesse James has been dead for over 60 years. He has? Then why are they charging a quarter to go into his house? Because he still has an FHA loan on it. Go ahead and sing your song, Larry. I'll take you to Lover's Lane afterward. And sing especially nice in appreciation of the way they love me here in good old St. Joe. Wait a minute. Wait for heaven's sake. For heaven's sake, I forgot about them. Same kid, but they drive me nuts. No kidding. I've never seen that. Larry Stevens singing Sweetheart of All My Dreams. And very good, too. They love you here, kid. Mr. Benny's right, Larry. St. Joe loves everybody. Oh, they sure do, Miss Livingston. In fact, last week, the St. Joseph News Press printed a big picture of Fred Allen on the front page and told about how funny he was when he played at the Crystal Theater. Hmm. Fred yeah, Allen. <laughs> I didn't know Fred ever played St. Joe. Yes, yes, he did, Mary. Allen was playing the Crystal Theater... And at the same time, the bags under his eyes were making a personal appearance at the Orpheum. <laughs> what, what an act he had. That was the first time the stockyards ever complained. <laughs> no kidding. You know, and another thing... Hi, you folks. I think you know me, but this is Missouri. So come on, show me. Jackson, listen to that applause. That's what I like about the South. <laughs> well, I was a cute entrance, Phil, and by the way, I've got a little compliment for you. Everybody liked you on the Fitch bandwagon last week. Well, thanks. And you know, Jackson, them Fitch people were awfully nice to us. You know, after the broadcast, they gave every one of my musicians a case of shampoo for a present. Well, that was darn nice of them. A whole case? Yes, and my guitar player says it's delicious when you cut it a little with ginger ale. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you mean to say that Frankie drank the shampoo? Frankie will drink anything. He's the only musician I know who strums his guitar with a corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Phil, I haven't seen much of you since we hit town. Uh, what have you been doing with yourself? Well, Jackson, I've been on the other side of the river. I was over in uh, Elwood, Kansas. <laughs> well, what, uh, what were you doing in Kansas? That's a dry state. I know. I wanted to see how the other half lived. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Well, Phil, how are you enjoying yourself here in St. Joe? Ah, uh, it's a great town, Jackson. Great. You know, this is a very historical place. You know, this is the home of Jesse Jones. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jesse James. <laughs> Jesse Jones. My goodness. They, Jack, didn't they use a lot of local scenery in that movie they made about Jesse James? Yes, Don. I remember that picture very well. They wanted me to play the part of Jesse. And then, strictly through politics, of course, they took Tyrone Power instead, you know? <laughs> well, why didn't they take you, Jackson? Because every time they shot a gun, his toupee blew off. <laughs> Mary, that wasn't a toupee. That was my mask that blew off. Since, uh, since when does a mask have bobby pins? Bobby pins. Bobby pins. Bobby pins. <laughs> <laughs> 
not married. <laughs> That's bobby pins. It's not Bobby's pins. They don't belong to Bobby. You know what I mean? <laughs> very funny, huh? You know, Mr. Benny, for an outlaw, Jesse James was a very romantic figure, wasn't he? What'd you say, Larry? I said for an outlaw, Jesse James was a very romantic figure, wasn't he? You're right, kid. Jesse James, I can just see him now, holding a crowd at bay. A look of defiance on his face. And in each hand, a smoking pistol. Look, I'm trying to tell Larry some historical facts about Jesse James. You see, kid, he always carried two guns, and everybody knew that Jesse James meant business. Now, getting back to the... Hey, uh, Mr. Benny, did Jesse James really live here? Yes, Larry, you saw his house. He lived right here in St. Joe. Gosh, did they love him, too? Well, I don't remember, kid. You see, anyway, at first, he led a very normal, peaceful life. Uh-huh. But then he got mad and started on a rampage. And you know why he got mad? Because Kansas was a dry state. <laughs> Look, Phil. Phil, I'm trying to tell Larry the story of the... Oh, my goodness. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Phil Welch, the mayor of this city. Well... It certainly is a pleasure to meet the mayor of good old St. Joe. All right, that's enough. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mayor Welsh. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. Well, I recognized you immediately. I saw you when you played here in Vaudeville. And I thought you had a very funny act. You did? Well. In fact, I laughed so hard I almost choked on my lollipop. <laughs> That's very good, Mayor. Very good, huh? Thanks, Jack. But I really came here on behalf of the city to make you an honorary president of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, this is indeed an honor. I've never been so thrilled. Here's your membership card, Mr. Benny. Say, say, just look at this. Jack Benny, Benny, honorary president of the St. Joseph Chamber of Commerce. And your membership fee is a dollar a year. Oh, A dollar a year? Yes. But look, uh, I'm only going to be here a week. Uh, how much will that be? In fact, I'm actually going to be here only four days, but why quibble, you know? <laughs> well, Mr. Benny, we never figured it in weeks. Oh, well, of course, Mayor Welch, I don't live in St. Joe. Uh, what's your rock-bottom price for non-residents? Huh? <laughs> Mr. Benny, one dollar is absolutely the lowest dues we've ever collected from any president of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, <laughs> I like to be sporting about those things, you know. Good. Now, here's 50 cents. Make me vice president. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Now, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'm glad you dropped around. Huh? Thank you, and good night, Jack. Good night. Good night. Hey, Mary, wasn't it nice of the mayor to give me this card? And it was worth 50 cents. Look what it says on it. The holder of this card is entitled to one ride on the Pony Express. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Half buck penny rides again. <laughs> Don't be so smart. I'm vice president now of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, if you'd given the whole dollar, you could have been president. Well, he'd rather be tight than president. <laughs> Now, cut that out. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in my official capacity as Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce of St. Joe, it is my honor to bring you one of our native daughters, a young lady who happens to be visiting here in our hometown, a very famous movie star, Miss Jane Wyman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Jack. It's really an honor being introduced by a four-bit Vice President. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome, Janie. And say, I was right when I said you were born here in St. Joe, wasn't I? Oh, yes, Jack. 28 years ago. And just think, when I was born, you were just a little seven-year-old kid running around Waukegan. Oh, oh Janie, don't make me younger than I really am. I, I was eight at the time. Huh? His father was nine. Oh, quiet. I merely asked Janie if she were born in St. Joe. Yes, Jack, and there's something I ought to tell you. 
The people here don't like their city to be called St. Joe. They don't? No, no, you see, it's like San Francisco. They like to be, they don't like to be called Frisco, and the people here like their city to be called St. Joseph. Oh, now, Jane. St. St. Joseph, but Janie, that would be silly. Silly? Why? Well, how would this sound? From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joseph, <laughs> wherever the four winds blow, sir. <laughs> See what I mean? No, sir. No, sir? <laughs> if this keeps up, I think I'll go, sir. You stay here. Anyway, Janie, it's nice that you're with us in your hometown. You know that everybody in this audience had to give a pint of blood to see this show. Well, you've raised your prices, haven't you? They didn't give it to me! I mean, why does everybody think that? In the first place, there isn't a man living who can take 4,000 pints. Wait a minute, Jackson. Frankie and I... I'm not talking about that. Say, Janie, how about you and I going out for a good time after the broadcast? We had fun the last time we went out together, didn't we? Oh, yes, Jack. But, well, I don't know how to say this, but to have a good time, you've got to spend some... Well, uh, well, for instance, last time we were out, remember what happened with a jukebox? Nothing happened. I put my nickel into that jukebox like everybody else did. Yes, but, Jack, wasn't that a little corny standing on the table yelling, This music comes to you through the courtesy of Jack Benny. <laughs> Janie. Star of stage, screen, radio, and the biggest hot dog in St. Joe for a dime. Well, I just did that for a gag. That was all. Oh, say, Jack, I just happened to think of something. Weren't you and Miss Wyman in that picture, uh, Hollywood Canteen? Yes, Don, but we didn't work together. You know, Janie, I have a little confession to make. When they started the picture, I wanted to do a love scene with you. So I spoke to the director. Well, I have a little confession to make, too. I spoke to him first. <laughs> You know, Jack, I appeared in my last two pictures with Jack Carson, and gosh, he's wonderful. Jack Carson? Mm -hmm. He is, huh? Oh, yes. He's so big and strong. Well, being big and strong isn't everything. Is but it? Jack, he's so handsome. So what? Beauty's only skin deep. Isn't and he's it? so young. Well, I know lots of people who prefer the more mature type. But Jack Carson is so funny. Janie, don't fence me out. <laughs> If you want to know something, in my new picture, my leading lady is Alexis Smith. Gosh, she's so tall and stately. You know? Yes, I know, Jack. And I heard about your accident when you were doing your love scene with Alexis. Accident? What happened, Jack? <laughs> he fell off his box while he was kissing her. <laughs> I didn't fall. She pushed me. Anyway, Janie, I'll bet you and I will be in a picture someday because I'm going to... Oh, there's the phone. Excuse me, Janie. Don't forget, after the show, we'll all go out together. And... I'll take it. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Where are you calling from? My hotel room? Well, I'm in the hotel, but I'm not in your room. I'm outside in the hall. Well, what are you doing out in the hall? You know that suit you wore on the cattle train? Yes? Well, I'm waiting for the dry cleaner to come and drag it out of the room. <laughs> but Rochester, I thought he was going to be there this morning to pick it up. Oh, he was, boss, and it's the first time a dry cleaner ever called for a suit and didn't have to say, where is it? <laughs> oh, then he picked up my suit? No, he went back to get a long hook. <laughs> A long hook. Rochester, does my suit smell that bad? Smell bad? I opened the window and it set spring back three months. <laughs> Rochester, my suit isn't as bad as that. If the cleaner doesn't come back, you brush it up yourself. Okay. And say, boss, you know that big banner outside the hotel with your picture on it? Yes. Well, somebody came along with a shotgun and gave you a bad case of measles. <laughs> what, you mean they shot holes in my face? Yeah, you got the only face in town that can sip flour. 
Watch it. I travel 4,000 miles to get to St. Joe, and shooting or no shooting, it's your job to keep those banners up there. Oh, boss, if they want to love you, let them, but let's not force it on ourselves. <laughs> I'm not forcing myself on them. They invited me to come here of their own free will. I knew free was in there someplace. <laughs> look, now look, Rochester, I want you... Hold in a minute, boss. The cleaner just came back and he's fishing for your suit with that long hook. That's good. So, now I guess everything else... Uh-oh. What's the matter? The suit grabbed the hook, picked up the cleaner, and it's running down the hallway. <laughs> It certainly does. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dog got it. If I find pumps in my hamburger, I'll know where my suit went. Play, Phil. Go ahead. <laughs> well, folks, our pleasant visit in St. Joe is just about over, and we certainly enjoyed every minute of it. And I want to thank all you wonderful people here for giving us such a swell reception. I'm sorry I haven't time to mention the names of all those who have been so nice to us. But you see, St. Joe has a population of 75,711. So you know what I mean. <laughs> Next week, we'll be in Colorado. Wednesday night at the Fort Logan Hospital. Thursday, Peterson Field at Colorado Springs. And Friday night, we'll see all you boys at Laurie Field. And next Sunday, we'll be broadcasting for military personnel at Fitzsimmons General Hospital in Denver. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. My mama done told me when I was in these pants. My mama done told me, son. <laughs> Broadcasting for the military personnel at Fitzsimmons Hospital in Denver, Colorado. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Don Wilson. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Jack Benny. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man whose voice is familiar to millions. A man whose personality and charm has captivated the listening audience of America. A man whose good humor and contagious laughter has brought sunshine and happiness into homes from coast to coast. The star of the Lucky Strike program, Don Wilson. Hmm. Thank you, thank you, and hello again. This is Don Wilson talking. And Jack, I want to thank you very much for introducing me as the star. You're welcome, you're welcome. It's the last time I'll ever play gin rummy with you. <laughs> And, and such silly stakes. Well, it's your own fault. You won't play for money. <laughs> All right, I lost and I had to introduce you. But, Don, why are you so anxious to be the star of the show tonight? Well, Jack, it's a matter of pride. You see, we're broadcasting from Denver, Colorado, and Denver happens to be my hometown. Oh, oh well, Don, you should have told me. Come on, fellas, let's give him another hand. Come on. Well, well, well. So you were born right here in Denver, eh, Don? That's right, Jack. Well, you've gone a long way since then. I bet your folks are very proud of you being a big radio announcer. Well, frankly, Jack, they're just a little disappointed. Disappointed? Yes. When I was born, my father thought I was going to be a jockey. <laughs> oh, for heaven. Don, a jockey only weighs about 97 pounds. Well, that's what I weighed when I was born. <laughs> Yes, I should have known. I'll bet your bassinet was the only one equipped with a block and tackle. <laughs> what a baby. The block and tackle must have come in handy for talcum powder operations. <laughs> hey, Don? Oh, Jack, you can kid me all you want to, but I was the cutest baby you ever saw. I can imagine. Yes, sir. Say, uh, here's a picture of me when I was eight months old. Let's see that, Don. Well, I'll be Don. That is cute. There you are, riding on your father's back. No, Jack. No, that's my father riding on my back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got mixed up because his feet were dangling there. You know what? <laughs> anyway, Don, it must make you very happy to be back in your own hometown. And to show you... Hello, the... Jack. Hi, you fellas. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> yes, 
sir. Well, Mary, I've never seen you looking so sweet. And that two-piece outfit you're wearing, it's terrific. Well, thanks, Jack. I'm glad you like it. You know, the skirt is made of nylon from a parachute. The skirt? Made out of nylon from a parachute? Yes. What about the jumper? Oh, he got away. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Anyway, that's a cute idea, making a skirt. No, really, it's cute, making a skirt out of an old parachute. It looks so... Say, May, what's that string hanging down the side? That's a ripcord, and don't you dare touch it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, anyway, you look nice. Say, Mary, do you know what I just found out? Denver is Don's hometown. That's right, Mary. I was born here. I know it, Don, and I even wrote a poem in your honor. Oh, you did, Mary. Well, that was very nice of you. It certainly was. Let's hear it, Ray. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> to you, Don Wilson, our announcer, we love you all. Yes, every pound, sir. Well. <laughs> to celebrate this great event, we'll have a party in a tent. <laughs> You'll get a cake with all the trimmings from the boys here at Fitzsimmons. Good, I'm hungry. <laughs> so congratulations to you, kiddo, for being born in Colorado. Colorado? That don't blend. It's too late now. This is the end. Applause. <laughs> That was really clever. And, Don, I don't want to make you feel bad in your hometown, but they think a lot of me here, too. In fact, Denver took a little hint from St. Joe. What do you mean, Jack? What do I mean? I'm talking about my welcome to Denver. Didn't you notice anything when we drove through the streets from the station to the hotel? Well, all I noticed was that it was snowing. Snowing? Well, how do you like that? The Chamber of Commerce told me it was confetti. <laughs> Why do I fall for those things? I had to fill up my pockets with it yet. <laughs> but confetti or no confetti, I like Denver. Yes, I remember playing the Orpheum Theater 20 years ago. I played here one week, and when I had to leave, there were tears in my eyes. I wish the police department would stop using that stuff. I mean... <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago. Jack, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing, Mary. I was just reminiscing, that's all. Come in. And Mr. Benny? Yes? My name is Mervyn Van Dyke, and I'm from St. Joe, Missouri. Well, I was in St. Joe last week. Yes, that's why I'm here. The people of that fair city have voted to place a statue of you in our public park. A statue of me? Well, gee, this is an honor. Uh, where do I have to go to pose for this statue? Oh, you don't have to go anyplace. I'm the sculptor, and I'm going to make it right here. But look, I'm on the air now. You just can't make a statue of me. Oh, while... yes, I can. <laughs> hey, boys, bring in that clump of clay. Look, Mr. Van Dyke, why can't we do this One side, Mr. Benny. Okay, boys, lay it right there. Look, Mr. Van Dyke, you can't leave that clump of clay here. Now, why can't we... Now, Mr. Benny, I'm ready to start. If you'll just hold still, I'll take one look at you and one look at this clump of... Say, this isn't going to need much changing after all. <laughs> Now, Mr. Van Dyke, please. Now, hold still. Don't move. This will only take a few weeks. Now, wait a minute. Let me look at that. Look, look, Mr. Van Dyke, you mean to say you're going to make a statue of me out of this... Stop cup? fingering my clay. <laughs> I wasn't fingering it. Now, if you'll wait till my show is over, I'll be only too happy Hello, to... Mr. Benny. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. Say, uh, Mr. Benny, what's that man doing over there? Him, oh, he's making a statue of me. A statue of you? Just like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln? Yes, sir. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, what did you do? He found a way to go from Fitzsimmons to Denver in 12 minutes. <laughs> Mary. And that includes a short stopover at the Yucca Club. <laughs> Mary. And if you stop there, who wants to go to Denver anyway? <laughs> Mary, that's enough. Now, Larry, the boys here are anxious to hear you sing a song, so let's have it. Okay. Oh, Mr. Benny. Wait a minute, Larry. What is it now, Mr. Van Dyke? I'm starting on your head first. Would you mind combing your hair? My hair is combed. Well, then, for heaven's sakes, muss it up. I can't stand it that way. <laughs> Look. Look, I've worn it this way for 50, 36 years, <laughs> and I'm not going to change now. Larry, go ahead and sing, will you? Yes, sir. If that statue doesn't have muscles on it, there's going to be trouble. That's all. <laughs> that was... Now, Let Me Love You Tonight, sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, kid. By the way, Larry, 
Have you seen any of the sights around Denver? You know, Buffalo Bill's Tomb or Pike's Peak? Or... Oh, yes, I was up on Pike's Peak yesterday. You were? Yeah. And you know something, Mr. Benny? When I got up on the top, I could hardly get my breath. Well, certainly. So you see, kid, that's on account of the high altitude. It is? Golly, I thought it was because I ran all the way up. <laughs> Well, that's logical. Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, for heaven's sake. Aren't you finished with that statue yet? Uh, not quite. I'm starting to chisel out your legs now. Would you mind squatting down a little and holding your legs apart? But that's such a, that's such a ridiculous pose. When you're alone, yes. But I'm cutting it this way so if we ever find an empty horse, we can slide him under you. <laughs> In the first place, you're making the legs out of proportion. Look right here. My knees are... Stop fingering my clay! <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry I'll let you stop. Hi, you girls and boys, get ready to leap with joy because here comes Mrs. Harris's curly-headed boy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a blonde, too. Natural, I'll have you know. Say, Jackson, who's that guy standing over there in the white coat and the beret? Oh, he came here from St. Joe. He's a sculptor. A sculptor? What's he doing? Giving you sculpt treatments? Ha, ha, ha! Oh, Harris, how this mountain air has sharpened your wit. Mountain air? Why, certainly, Jack. You know, Denver's one of the highest cities in the world. That's right, Jackson. The minute we got here, my nose started bleeding. My nose bled a little, too. Gee, mine did, too. Ha, ha, ha. What a bunch of sissies. Nothing happened to my nose when I got here. Yeah, I know, but one drop of your blood forced itself to the surface, turned around and saw it wasn't being followed, sang two courses of I Walk Alone and Crawl Back In. <laughs> oh, stop with those gags. Ah, I was only kidding you, Jackson. You know, I've learned a lot on this trip. You know, traveling sure is educational. Yeah, I can imagine how much it must have helped you. Well, it has. Now, for instance... Today, I seen the Colorado River, and gee, Jackson, it's interesting. You know, it flows along, and it comes to a big bunch of dams, and after that, it flows into a big reservoir. And, uh, confidentially, Jackson, uh, you want to know something? What? People drink that stuff. <laughs> well, Phil, this may amaze you, but do you know that there are millions of people in this country who drink nothing but water? How do you like that? And they don't even advertise the stuff. <laughs> Look, Phil. Oh, Mr. Benny. Now what? Would you loan me your handkerchief? Your statue's nose is bleeding. <laughs> now, cut that off. Everybody has to be a comedian here. Say, Phil, did you know there used to be a famous restaurant here in Denver called the Silver Dollar? There was? Uh-huh. In fact, it became famous because the entire floor was inlaid with silver dollars. And the walls were... Jack, come back here. That was years ago. <laughs> Oh, oh. And give me back my hammer and chisel. Yeah, I only wanted to scratch my back with it, that's all. <laughs> now, Phil, let's have a band number before... Just a minute, just a minute. Mr. Van Dyke, stop interrupting my program. You can do my statue later. But I just finished one leg down to your foot. Would you mind slipping off one of your shoes and socks so I can take a look at your toes? Mr. Van Dyke, I told you, I'm yeah, not going... he's making your statue, so do what he says. Oh, all right. There. Look at my toes. Hmm. Five, just like everybody else. <laughs> well, what? What do you expect to find? A bunch of bananas? Now, look at that silly statue. Look right here. Stop this... fingering my clay. I was just trying to give myself a dimple. Well, you haven't got a dimple there. <laughs> Phil, play a band number with you. Maybe you'll scare this guy away. Okay, Jack. He drives me nuts anyway. <laughs> That was every time played by Phil Harrison and his orchestra, with an occasional hiccup by Frankie, his guitar player. <laughs> now, as a special treat for the boys here at Fitzsimmons, and for uh, Governor Vivian of Colorado, who's with us, I will play a violin solo. Oh, no, Jackson. No, Jackson. No! Lock me in a room with Spike Jones, but not that. <laughs> Phil, please. Leave him alone, Phil. Say, Jack, why don't you play that new tune for the boys, the one you rehearsed this morning? Didn't sound bad at all. No, Mary, I better play the hey, one. Hey, Libby, you mean Jackson learned how to play a new tune? Yeah, he learned it this morning. This morning? I didn't hear him. I know, Don. It was before the regular rehearsal. I went over to the Brown Palace Hotel to pick Jack up, and in fact, I got there before Jack and Jack was still asleep. <laughs> Hey, it's almost time for 
rehearsal, I better go in and wake up the boss. But then he's been doing so many shows, he needs a little rest. Oh, there's the phone. Hello? Mr. Benny's room, star of stage, screen, and radio, but will work for anything that jingles, bowls, or has a trade-in value. <laughs> Who's calling? The manager? I know this, uh, this hotel has laundry service. I, I know the rates are reasonable. I know this is a classy hotel. Okay, I'll tell him. Doggone, Mr. Benny's just got to stop hanging his underwear out the window. <laughs> I don't mind it in the summer, but that long underwear. <laughs> Uh-oh, look what time it is. I better wake him up. <laughs> my, my, just look at him laying there. So nice and peaceful. Oh, Hetty. <laughs> Kiss me, Hetty. Come here, Paulette. Let me put my arms around you. You too, Lana. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> what a man. He lives like a lamb and dreams like a wolf. <laughs> don't go, Hetty. Come here, Dorothy. No, it's not that I don't love you, Lana. But, you know... Boss, boss, wake up! You're getting yourself involved! <laughs> huh? What? Oh, oh, it's you, Rochester. Yeah, you better get dressed. You'll be late for rehearsal. Oh, yeah, we got a show to do at Fitzsimmons Hospital. That's right, boss. I better call downstairs and order your breakfast. Okay. Operator, get me room service, please. Room service? This is Mr. Benny's room. Send up some grapefruit juice. Small glass. <laughs> Pot of coffee, small pot. A bowl of cereal, small bowl. And make out the check while you're in that small mood. Hey, Rochester, were there any messages for me while I was asleep? Yes, boss. The manager of the hotel where you stayed in St. Joe called. Uh huh. So I told him it was a mistake and you didn't take it away intentionally. Good. I told him after you put those quarters in the radio, you thought you owned it. No, oh, well, we'll send it back anyway. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You better hurry up. Everybody's waiting to rehearse. I'll be down in a few minutes. Say, Mary, I was just uh, thinking about the broadcast we're going to do at Fitzsimmons Hospital. You know, I'd like to do something different for the boys this week. I think I'll play a violin solo. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. You're not going to take that fiddle with you. Certainly I'm going to take it. Say... I wonder if I need a new violin. You don't even need the one you got. <laughs> Never mind and hand it to me. You know, I think I'll, new, I'll, I'll learn that new song that's out. Accentuate the positive. Now, let's see. Let's see. Uh, how, how does that go, Mary? Huh? You gotta accentuate the positive. Eliminate the negative. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got it now. Wait a minute. Let me just try it. Just like... No. Wait a minute. I'll get it. Don't worry. I don't know what's the matter with this, isn't it? Wait a minute, boss. Wait a minute. Let me show you how it goes. Listen to this. Okay. That's it. That's it. I can walk out right after the boys. Come on, Mary. Let's go over to Fitzsimmons. Come on. Well, folks, this winds up our broadcast at Fitzsimmons Hospital in Denver, and I'm sure glad the boys invited us out here. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Tomorrow night, we'll be seeing you fellas stationed at Camp Carson and Peterson Field in Colorado Springs. So until then... Say, Mr. Benny. Now what? I'm almost through with your statue. Do you have a hole in the top of your head? <laughs> a hole in the top of my head? Why? Well, if you have, I can make this into a fountain. <laughs> Oh, go away. Good night, folks.
Night program starring Jack Benny with Perry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after a tour of military camps in Colorado, Missouri, Illinois, and New York, Jack Benny is back again in his little old home in little old Beverly Hills. Ah, California. The land of enchantment. Where the fragrance of orange blossoms permeates the air. The land of eternal sunshine. <laughs> hmm, this must be last year's travel for us. Well, anyway, it's nice to be home after eight weeks. Oh, well, Rochester. Rochester, where are you? I'm out here in the kitchen unpacking your last trunk. I'm packing my trunk in the kitchen? Isn't that a roundabout way of doing it? No, boss, I already put your suits back in the closet, your shirt back in the dresser, and now I'm putting the sandwiches back in the icebox. <laughs> Well, good. They'll come in handy on our next trip. You know, it's bad enough to take a few sandwiches in the police, but Paul, it's a trunk full. Roger, so there's nothing like playing safe when you're on a train. I know, but when everybody else wanted to eat, they went to the diner. We had to go to the baggage room. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. It was so dark in there. Dark? Yeah, remember how you got mad when I thought your fingers were as bad as hip? <laughs> mad? What for? You didn't bite my fingers. No, fortunately you stopped me just as I was dipping them in the mayonnaise. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, I only packed enough food to last us for the trip. How many sandwiches have we got left? One ham, one cheese, and 385 peanut butter. <laughs> 385 peanut butter? Yeah, they didn't sell so good, did they? <laughs> Rochester, I wasn't selling sandwiches. There were a lot of people who couldn't get into the diner, so I gave them those sandwiches absolutely free. The sandwiches, yeah, but then you made me sing and charge them entertainment. <laughs> I only charged those that got up to dance. I don't want to hear any more about this. Oh, darn it, there's that sculptor from St. Joe. Still working on my statue. I wish he'd hurry up and finish it. Say, boss, I was just watching him make that statue, and he's got you standing there with your hand in your vest like Napoleon. Well, what's wrong with that? He's got your other two hands in your pocket. <laughs> Three hands? That's ridiculous. How many legs did he give me? I don't know, but if the racetrack were open, I'd bet on you. <laughs> well, he's the silliest guy I ever... There's the door. Maybe if I sent St. Joe a picture of me, they'd call that guy off. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, you know that sculptor from St. Joe who followed me to Denver? Yeah. Well, he followed me here, too, and he insists on finishing that statue. What are you complaining about? I think it's a wonderful tribute. They got a statue of Jesse James there, too. Oh, fine. Comparing me to Jesse James. I never robbed a train in my life. No, but you put a dining car out of business. <laughs> Rochester, go back in the kitchen. Say, Jack, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I'll tell you when the rest of the gang get here. Why'd you come over so early, Mary? Well, I got a letter from Mom, and I wanted to read it to you. Oh, a letter from your mother? Well, what does the Lauren Bacall of Plainfield have? To say? Here it is. <coughs> oh, very funny. <coughs> uh, Plainfield, New Jersey, February 30th. February 30th? Well, February only has 28 days. I know, but Mama doesn't think it's fair. <laughs> oh, well, go ahead, read it. My dear daughter Mary. It certainly was exciting when you and Jack spent those few days with us on your trip east. It's too bad you had to dress in such a hurry that morning to catch the train. You barely made it. I didn't realize how much you had rushed until after you were gone. But don't worry, as I just mailed your toothbrush and Jack's hair. Hmm. The one with the handle is the toothbrush. <laughs> No wonder I caught cold in Chicago. <laughs> Mary, darling, I must tell you the wonderful time we had in Jersey City last Saturday. Your father's doctor invited our whole family to attend his medical convention, and it was very exciting. 
The doctor held a beauty contest, and your sister Babe was voted Miss. It shouldn't happen to of nineteen forty five. I know Babe could do it. <laughs> your brother Hillard has been reclassified, and it looks like it won't be long now because the draft board has a new system. They take a phone book, pick a number, call it, and if you answer, you're in. Well, the telephone is faster. Now I can understand those posters that say Uncle Sam needs you. He's not pointing. He's getting ready to dial. <laughs> hey, your mother's not kidding, you. Your cousin Bobby is now a corporal. is already overseas. He's the one who took his basic training at Montgomery Ward. <laughs> Your mother's funny, you know. And now in closing, Mary, I have some neighborhood gossip that will really surprise you. Guess who murdered his wife this morning? No other news, love, Mama. <laughs> Goody Ace will love that. Well, that's a fine way to end up. A... Come in. Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. I came as soon as I got your message. Well, I'll talk to you about it when the rest of the gang gets here. Okay. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Larry. Glad to be home. Oh, I sure am. And to celebrate my homecoming, all my friends tipped in and threw a big party for me. How was it? Well, I don't know. I couldn't afford to go. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Say, Larry, did Mr. Harris send you the arrangement for your song for Sunday? Yeah, and I think it's pretty good. Would you like to hear it? Sure, kid. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Oh, Larry, that's... Well, that, uh, that song sounded very good, kid. It certainly did, Larry. Thanks, Miss Livingston. Oh, Mr. Benny, here's a note I just found. It was left by Mr. Wimbish, the man you rented your house to when you went away. Well, I'll be darned. I forgot all about Mr. Wimbish. Let me see that. Dear Mr. Benny, if you remember the Mr. Wimbish you rented your house to, that's me. However, I lived in your house just one week and something very urgent happened. I had to go somewhere, and since they asked me in such a nice way, I couldn't refuse. Sincerely yours, Private Wimby. <laughs> P.S. Profit by my experience. If the phone rings, don't answer it. <laughs> Mary, say, Mary, your mother must have been right about him. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. I got your call. What's up? I'll tell you when Don gets here. Hello, Libby. Hello, Phil. Isn't it great to be home again? Yeah, this is what I kept dreaming about during all those cold weeks back east. Yep, getting back to good old California. Yeah, man, this is the only place for me. You said it, Phil. Come on in the other room. Okay, where shall I put my umbrella? <laughs> uh, right over there by Mary's boot. <laughs> Say, Phil, you look a little tired. Yeah, I am. All day long I've been helping Frankie, my guitar player, look for a place to live. Uh, did he find one? No, Jackson, and the poor guy's practically an orphan now that they're closing the bars at midnight. <laughs> oh, yeah. If he hadn't been locked in twice, he wouldn't have gotten any sleep at all. <laughs> well, look, it, I'm getting sick. All you do is worry about Frankie, your guitar player. That's all I hear. You know, it wouldn't hurt you if you settled down yourself and got a little more sensible. Eh? What are you talking about, Jackson? I am sensible. Remember Chicago when we met the fellow who draws the Dick Tracy cartoons? Yeah. Well, he said I was a very level-headed guy. He didn't say you were level-headed. He said you reminded him of Flat Top. <laughs> you level-headed. Oh, stop picking on me. Every time I open my mouth, you jump right down my throat. I'm not jumping down your throat. I'm just trying to give you a little advice, that's all. Well, I don't need any advice from you, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> I can take care of myself. Mr. Anthony, I demand a little more respect from you, Phil. Remember, I'm the boss. The boss, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah? Jack, that was a door buzzer. <laughs> then why is Phil wiping off his chin? <laughs> is that the door? Come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Don. It's great to be home again, isn't it? Uh, sure is. Say, Jack, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I'll tell you as soon as Don gets here. I am Don. I mean, Wilson. I'm Wilson. I'm mixed up. I'm the door buzzer. <laughs> oh, God. 
Now look, kid. The reason I asked you all to come over is because there's something important I want to talk to you about. Your expense account for the trip. Fasten your safety belt, fellas. It's going to be a rough ride. You're darn right it is. But looking over the expense accounts all of you turned in, you must think money grows on trees. Yeah, Jackson, you've got enough to keep you in the shade for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, Phil, since you're such a wise guy, we'll start with you. What's this item for $10 marked valet service? I had some suits pressed at the hotel. Hmm. I pressed my own suit. <laughs> and, Wilson, look at your account. What's this charge for $7 marked laundry? Well, it's just what it is. I paid $7 to have some laundry done. Hmm. All that free soap and water in the hotel. <laughs> you know, I wash my own clothes. Now, Mary, what's this charge on your account? Fifteen dollars, NG. A new girdle. Let's see you wiggle out of that one. <laughs> all right, all right. And Larry. Yes, Mr. Benny. Uh, look at this account you turned in. Three dollars for your hotel room. Isn't that kind of expensive? <laughs> well, well, I thought so, too, but that's what you charged me for sharing your bed with you. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, yes, kid, I forgot. Now, getting back to your expense accounts, I want you kids to be more careful in the future, but I'll pay you off now. Wait here, I'll go into my vault and get the money. Please turn your back. Thanks. Oh, yeah. A fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, it's you, Mr. Ben. That's right. <laughs> uh, how have you been, Ed? Quite well, sir. Me too. Sure, good to get back home. Have eh? oh, you been away? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, for eight weeks. Uh, I went to New York. Oh, must be nice there now. No, 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 Ed. It's winter. <laughs> oh. Well, it's hard to tell in here. <laughs> Yes, I imagine it is. Uh, take out your gun, Ed. I'm going to open the safe. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Let's see. The combination is right to 45. Left to 160. Back to 15. And left to 110. There. <laughs> I need a louder burglar alarm. <laughs> well, let's see. This ought to be enough money. What's well, so long, Ed? Bye, Mr. Benny. Say, Ed, I've been thinking. Aren't you kind of lonesome down here? No, oh, I don't mind. Well, nevertheless, I'm going to get to a radio. Radio? What's that? <laughs> well, it's a, a new thing that, that people enjoy. Well, send one down. If I like it, I'll eat it. <laughs> No, no, Ed, it's nothing to eat, you know. Well, so long. So long, Mr. Benny. Well, here you are, kid. I've got the money. Don't hold it so tight. Look how white his knuckles are. <laughs> I guess you're glad you're getting it, that's all. Okay, Jack, while you were in the vault playing Monte Cristo, my maid, Pauline, called up. Yeah? She said they delivered my luggage from the station, but my brown grip is missing. Your brown grip? Yes, and I've got to have it. All my laundry's in that bag. Well, gee, you better call up the station and try and find it. No, I've got my car, Todd. I better drive down. Will you come with me? Okay, make yourself at home, fellas. I'll see you later. Come on, Jack. Just a minute. It's locked. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Don't drive so fast, Mary. Take it easy. It's awfully windy with the top down. Let's stop and put it up. But, Jack, fresh air is good for you. What if it does blow your hair around a little? Listen, sister, it blows yours around. It blows mine off. <laughs> oh, why don't you get rid of it? The way the wind keeps lifting up, you look like you're reading a mystery story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll put it in the glove compartment. Ooh, chilly. <laughs> 
Well, I'll leave it off. You'll get used to it. Anyway, here's the station. Yeah, there's a parking place right in front. I see it. There. Let's go in. Gosh, look at that mob in there. Gee, railroad station are always so crowded. Now, let's see. Where's the... Train uh... leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cape <laughs> Camunga. Come on, Mary. Let's go over to the baggage room and find out about well, it. Well, well, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Bill, you old scoundrel. I haven't seen you since the Kansas City Convention five years ago. Look, there must be... What no, a no. brawl that was. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Dolores, the hat check girl? She's still looking for you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. See, you made Holy a mistake. Smoke, Bill. How are you aged in five years. Huh? <laughs> I told you in Kansas City that the kind of life you were leading to kill you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Look, I'm, I'm not... Now, a... now, Bill, I'm not joking. you. Girl, I have to live with you, please. But it's beginning to tell on you. Look, Why, I... you've even lost your hair. He did lose it. It's in the glove compartment. <laughs> Mary. Well, well, Bill, this must be your little one. Hmm? My, my, she's grown since I saw her last. <laughs> You know, young lady, I've known your father ever since... I'm not her father! <laughs> You're not her... Oh... <laughs> I get it. Still the same old Bill. <laughs> well, well, don't worry, Bill, don't worry. If I see you, missus, I won't say a word. Look, look, I'm trying to tell oh, you... By the way, you still with a catch-all garbage can company... <laughs> That's all garbage. Look, if you just listen for a minute. Look, fella. I'll never forget the time you sold the city of Syracuse 2,000 garbage cans. I... And the first time they were used, the bottom fell out of every one. <laughs> what a stink that was. Look, mister, I'm trying to tell you that I... Ah, I've got to run, Bill. I've got to run. I'm taking the train to San Diego. Look, I... Hey, San Diego. Remember that night, Bill? <laughs> well, so long, Bill. I'll see you in Boston in 48. What a silly guy. I wonder who he thought I was. Bill. Oh, yeah. Come on, Mary. There's the baggage room there. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. Look, Mary, I'll tell them it's in my suitcase. You know how they push women around. Oh, you better let me handle it, Chad. No, I'll show you how to get things done in a hurry. Well, okay, but I think you're wrong. Oh, say, mister. Yes? <laughs> yesterday, yesterday when I got off the train, I missed a suitcase. Well, now that's the switch. Just this morning, a man got off a suitcase and missed the train. <laughs> look, 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 never mind the joke. Look, the bag I'm looking for is brown alligator with a double handle. Uh, just a moment. I'll look for it. Okay. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. My husband is out to run. <laughs> now, Mary. <laughs> now, Mary, don't worry about your grip. I'll get it for you. As this is the only alligator bag I found, it has the initials ML on it. That's me, Mervyn Larson. Here, I'll take it. Ah, not so fast, Mervyn. First, you've got to identify the contents. Now, let's see. There, it's open. Now, I'll go through the... Hey, this can't be your bag. Oh, yes, it is. Really, Merv, and you have such a deep voice. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Just, just look at this. Three pairs of panties, four pairs of stockings, two nights... Now, look, smart guy, close that bag. I said you old rascal up to your old place. Ah! Look, will you please go away? Ah, 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 good old Bill. Hey, wait a minute. Bill, you said your name was Mervyn. My name isn't Bill, is it, Mary? No, it's Jack. There. Jack, yes. what happened to Mervyn? That's my name. Then this bag is yours. It is not. It's my bag. So, who are you and what's your name? Her name is Bag and she wants her Mary. <laughs> I mean, her name is Mary and she wants her back. Then for heaven's sake, what's your name? My name is Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bill. Well, go away, will you? Train leaving on track five for Anaheim. Well, I'm back from lunch, honey. Azusa and Kuka Munga. <laughs> oh, now, come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> Oh, 
Mary, we finally got the right bag, so you don't have to do that nothing to worry about. You know? I knew you could do it, Mervyn. You can stop with that Mervyn now. Wait a minute, Mary. Didn't you drive past the house? I don't think so. Well, where are we? Just a second. I'll put up the periscope and see. I told you we should have had the top up. Good night, folks. <laughs> program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis, and you're truly Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, a little over a month ago, Jack Benny made his first and only appearance in television. Last week, the radio and TV editors of the United States conducted a poll. And who do you think was selected as the most outstanding personality in television? Don. And which comedian was picked as having television's funniest program? Don. And who do you think was chosen as television's most popular? Don, Don. We, we can't do this introduction. Why not? We wrote it too soon. They picked Milton Burrow. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, you'll have to think of something else. Okay, Jack. Uh, wait a minute, Don. Jack Benny, do you mean to say that when you heard there was going to be a poll, you had the nerve to assume they were going to pick you? Well, you... never wait for final results, do you? What? Every time you made a picture, you were so sure you were going to win the Academy Award. Look, Mary. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're the only actor in Hollywood who's got 12 bottles of gold polish and no Oscars. <laughs> well, for your information, Mary, that polish isn't going to wait. Well, what do you mean? Come here a minute. You know that bowl in my living room that's full of goldfish? Uh-huh. Sardines. <laughs> You trained them to jump through onion rings. <laughs> It'd be great for television, huh? Now, Don, due to this unfortunate turn of events, you'll have to give me another introduction. But, Jack, I still think that even though you did only one program in TV, you should have been selected as television's greatest star. Well, well Don... I agree with Don, Jack. Not only did you look useful and handsome, but you're a master showman. Oh, man. Why, Jack, I thought your timing was absolutely... Hold it, kids. I know Christmas is coming, but let's not get panicky. <laughs> So that's it, using flattery to get Christmas presents. Phil, I'm surprised you didn't go along with them. Why should I butter you up for a lousy pair of shoelaces? <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. I'll admit that three years ago, I gave Don Wilson a pair of shoelaces for Christmas. But I only did that for a gag. Well, I'm ready for another gag. They broke this morning. <laughs> Really? I, I knew I should have gotten the ones with the metal tip. <laughs> anyway, fellas, I still think that you got a lot of nerve. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, yeah, she's here. Hold the wire. Mary, it's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Oh, hello, babe. Where did you get into town? Your sister, babe? Yeah. What? Oh, that's wonderful, babe. Where are you staying while you're here? Well, be more specific. Which YMCA? <laughs> what? Uh, how were things at home when you left? Aunt Clara had a boy? Yeah, Aunt Clara had a boy this time. Oh, just what she wanted. That makes it even, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 12 of each. <laughs> uh, babe, what are you doing in California? Uh, you have to go to San Francisco? So soon? But it seems like they just painted that bridge. Mary. Well, tell me, babe, if you're going to San Francisco, what are you doing here in Los Angeles? Lawsuit? You're going to sue Phil Harris? But why? Oh, babe, I'm sure he doesn't mean you when he sings about the thing. <laughs> Pictures on the music? <laughs> well, then maybe you've got a case. <laughs> so long, babe. See you later. Hey, Phil, babe's gonna sue you. You better explain what the thing is. What kind of a song is it, anyway? Well, Jackson, I can't describe it to you. You'll have to hear it. Well, can your boys play it? That's all they can play. <laughs> well, okay, come on. Let's have it. Well... I would have enjoyed it even more if Phil's orchestra wasn't off-key. What do you mean, off-key? Now, let me tell you something, Jackson, that you may not know. Some of my musicians are symphony men. They used to be with G and Emmy. 
That's Tosca Nene. G and Nene. A natural mistake for a chap whose wife owns the Bank of America. <laughs> Well, I'm not interested. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm from the Red Arrow Messenger Service. I was told to give you this envelope. This? Oh, yes. I, I know what it is. Thanks. Are you welcome. Oh, just a minute, boy. Here. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a nickel. Now I can move to Beverly Hills. <laughs> I'm glad they finally sent this envelope over. <laughs> what is it, Jack? Well, I'm going to be interviewed by a radio commentator, and she sent me the question, so I'll have to think about the answers. Mary, here, you go over this with me and read the questions just as they're written, will you please? Okay. <clears throat> Here's the first question. Tell me, Mr. Benny, where were you born? Uh, Waukegan, Illinois, February 14th, 1911. <laughs> Mary, ask me the next question. Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Benny, we've seen many pictures of you in a sailor suit. What year did you enter the Navy? 1917. Go ahead, Mary. Next question. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Jack. You were born in 1911 and went into the Navy in 1917? Yes. Next question. Now, hold it, Jackson. If you were born in 1911 and went in the Navy in 1917, you would have been only six years old. Next question, Mary. Jack, how could you possibly get into the Navy when you were only six years old? I had a tough draft board and shut up. <laughs> now, go ahead, Mary. Ask me the next question. Okay. Now, Mr. Benny, this is your 19th year in radio, isn't it? Yes. Uh, who is your first sponsor? Uh, Tanner Dry Ginger Ale. Next question, Mary. Well, after they fired you, what did you... Hold it. <laughs> Let me see that. That's after they hired me. After they fired me. A natural mistake for a gal who broke down the garage door and pulled the exhaust pipe out of your mouth. <laughs> Mary, this is a real legitimate interview, so let's be serious. Now, ask me the next question. All right. Mr. Benny, tell me something about Rochester, your butler. Rochester? Yes. How long has he been with you? Well, Rochester's been with me 14 years. As a matter of fact, it'll be exactly 14 years in March. Well, how did you happen to find Rochester? I'm glad you asked me that. It's a very interesting story. 14 years... Jack, I know how you found Rochester. Let's get on to the next question. But wait a minute, Mary. I'm going to have to do it when they interview me on the program. So I might as well get it all clear in my mind now. 14 years ago, I was in New York. It was about the middle of March, 1937. The weather was so nice, I decided to take a little drive. I was driving along 7th Avenue, around 134th Street. In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and far. Oh, da dum da dum da dum da da dum bum 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 Ah, there's nothing like an auto ride on a day like this. Gosh, how time flies. Here it is, 1937. I sure had this car a long time. I bought it secondhand, too. Got it from the Smiling Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing it up for? I'm all alone. <laughs> In my Mary Maxwell car. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. The month of March can be so nice in New York. Trees beginning to bud, birds are singing. See, it's great to be alive. I'm glad Mary pulled that exhaust pipe out of my mouth. <laughs> she was right, I did get another job. In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and... <laughs> well, how do you like that? Hey, you, this is all your fault. My fault? You think just because you drive a taxi, you can smash into other people's cars? But, Mr. Don't but Mr. Me. I'm going to sue you and your taxi company for damages. Because it was your fault. But, Mr., I was parked here when you hit me. This is a gas station. <laughs> well, I can't understand how I could have run into you. Neither can I. I was up on the green grass. <laughs> Never mind that. Let me see your driver's license. Okay, here it is. Hmm. 
March 18, 1937, issued to Rochester Van Jones, 5 feet 10 inches, 155 pounds, 31 years old, Orchichornia. What's that? Dog eyes. <laughs> my car, and I'm going to take you into court and get every cent you've got in the world. You can reach in my pocket and do that. <laughs> well, you better think it over, and I'm willing to be reasonable. If you want to arbitrate and settle this out of court, I'll be home all afternoon. Hey, do you think that a new taxi driver you hired will work out, Amos? I don't know, Amos. see why you had to hire a driver in the first place. You only got one cab and I can drive that. Listen, Amos, when you reach as our position in business the world, you have got to have people working for you. Yeah, well, I can't see where we have reached no position like that. Listen, Amos, <laughs> do you realize that last month we lost less money than any month since we've been in business? <laughs> yeah, but there's a reason for that. Last month only had 28 days in it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You know, Amos, if we can find a month short enough, we'll be able to break even. Yeah, but then I still think that we should wait till we start making money before we go around hiring people. No, no, Amos. People is the thing. <laughs> if we ain't got nobody working for us and we go bankrupt, there ain't gonna be nobody sorry for us but us. And us ain't enough people to absorb all that sorrow. <laughs> well, then we ain't bankrupt yet, though. I know, but we're just getting into those long months. <laughs> well, I still think that I should deal with that driving that cab myself. Uh, here comes Rochester, your new driver. Uh, hello there, Rochester. How was business this morning? Bang up, gentlemen! Bang up! <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I had an accident with a man named Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Oh, that must be the radio comedian. If it is, this is really bad. <laughs> He's supposed to be the cheapest man in the world. Cheapest man in the world? Yes, sir. I hear he lives so close to his money that even his skin feels like an outsider. <laughs> and I also hear that he's got a zipper on his wallet that has yet to make his first zip. <laughs> man, he must be. Oh, he can't be so bad, gentlemen. In fact, he said he'd be home all afternoon if we wanted to arbitrate. Wanted to arbor who? The man said arbitrate. Arbitrate. Well, now, there, that ain't any coincidence. Arbitrate happens to be the one word in the English language with which I ain't familiar. Well, why don't you look it up in the dictionary, Dan? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I got the dictionary right here. Yeah. Arbitrate. R. <laughs> What is the second letter? You ain't got the first one yet. I know I ain't. I'll get the first letter. I'm working on the second. Now, let me see here. Well, hello there, boys. How's everything going? Oh, not so good, Kingfish. Rochester here done had an accident in the taxi cab. Well, that's bad, boys, bad. It's worse than that. The man he accidented with is going to arbitrate him. Uh oh, that ain't good, boys. How you know? You have been arbitrated? nothing yet. <laughs> to act as an umpire. Well, the man wants to play baseball. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, you was thinking of umpire. This here is umpire. Well, what is the difference? Well, there's a baseball umpire, the British umpire, and the umpire state building. <laughs> Three entirely different works. 
Oh, here it is. Arbitrary. To settle a dispute. That's it, gentlemen. I think Mr. Benny wants to settle this dispute. Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, Kingfish, you better come along with us. We got to go to see this man that Rochester accidented with. Yeah, well, you go along in my place, Kingfish. I better take the taxi cab over to the shop and fix it. Yeah, okay, we better go. And remember, when we seize the man, let's all arbitrate in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to watch that. Come on, let's get on over there. Come on. <laughs> Well, here it is, Kingfish. This is the right place, ain't it, Rochester? That's what it says here on the card. Yeah, good. Yes? Uh, excuse us for protruding, but, uh, <laughs> I, as a general manager, general counsel, and everything else for the first air taxi cab company of America eliminated. Yeah. And I, as likewise. Oh, yes, uh, you men are here about the accident. Uh, come right in. I presume that your driver's informed you of the circumstances and my position in this case. Oh, yes, sir. He done did that. Now, Mr. Benny, if you'll just make us out a check for $50, we'll forget the whole thing. <laughs> me pay you? Listen, you start those tactics with me, you won't even get the first base. There you are, gentlemen. I told you the man wanted to play baseball. <laughs> baseball? Look, don't talk in riddles or I'll turn this matter over to a lawyer. Lawyer? Well, here's my card, Mr. Benner. Help wait me. a minute, yeah. Wait a minute, King Pinch. You was on our side. I am. Sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got my hippos at the head of my car puzzle desk. <laughs> now, look, you boys. You pay me for the damage to my car, or I'll take you to court. Well, now, just a minute there, Mr. Benny. You acting kind of hasty. You ain't even let us tell our side of the story. I don't care about your side of the story. I'll have my lawyer see you in the morning. Well, now, and... just a minute, Mr. Benner. Just a minute. Uh, uh, hold it, please. Uh, uh, see, Andy, come here. Yeah. We got to do a little conferencing. No, no, Rochester, you stay where he is. This is just an injector into the company. Yeah, Rochester, we'll put up a bulletin for the employees. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Keith, uh, you look like you done gimmick just a gimmick here. What is it? Yeah, I just don't give myself an idea in the head, yeah. Sure. Now, look, uh, uh, like we, uh, uh, it seemed to me we're going to have to pay Mr. Benny, and we ain't got no cash. Yeah, and I don't think we can give him no check, neither. He looks like a vegetarian. <laughs> If he don't see no green in front of him, he ain't going to bite, I tell you. Man, look here. I done noticed that uh, Mr. Bennett done answered the door by itself. In other words, putting it in the vehicular. That means that he ain't got no gentleman's gentleman. Yeah. Getting the guts of your conversation, Kingfish. He ain't got no valor, huh? Yeah, you getting a half Nelson on the thing now, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as far as Rochester's concerned, we don't want no driver who is reckless enough to get hit on a grease rack. <laughs> Now, look, man, do you follow me? Follow you, Kingfish. If you turn around, we can dance. <laughs> now, you mean the thing to do is to palm Rochester off on Mr. Benny, huh? That's it. Now, now watch, man. Watch. Yeah. Uh, Miss Benny! <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Uh, we have done the the thing from every angle, and we want to give you the benefit of all the bricks. And make a settlement in your favor. That's what we want to do. Oh, well, well, that's different. Yeah, now, Mr. Benny, we're going to take our cards out of our sleeve and lay them right on the table. No. Now, if you'll just bring your valet in here to witness this... Valet? Uh, like, uh, I don't have a valet. No valet? A man of your social position? A man who is the star of stage, screen, and radio? And who has done nominated himself for an Academy Award? <laughs> a man like you has got no valet? Well, I... Uh... No valet? Well, I, I to tell you, fellas, I've been thinking a long time of getting a ballot, but somehow the right man hasn't come along. Ha, ha, ha. He's here now. <laughs> yes, sir, he's here already. Gentlemen, gentlemen, stop for me, sit around me. Quiet, Rochester, quiet. And shake hands with your new boss. Wait a minute, not so fast. Come on, Andy, we gotta go. Now, wait a minute. Goodbye, Mr. Bennett. Good luck, Rochester. <laughs> Now, don't you think we ought to discuss money? Well, yes, yes, Rochester. What do you think would be a fair salary? I ain't gonna get that, so let's start somewhere else. Well, <laughs> oh, good, good. Grab that vacuum cleaner. We can talk as we walk. Well, 
Well, Mary, I think the way I've got the interview is all right. I think people will be interested in the way I found Rochester. Well, I think so, but Jack, how could you have possibly hit his car while I was up in the grass week? <laughs> A natural mistake for a girl who's going back to the May Company tomorrow. Tonight, folks, we're a little crazy. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is alone in the kitchen preparing breakfast. Mm-mm. Look at Mm-mm. that table. Sure does look appetizing. A large glass of orange juice, a bowl of cornflakes and cream, two fried eggs, sunny side up, a thick slice of ham, a pipe and hot cup of coffee, and three honey-covered English muffins. Well, now I better make some tea and toast for Mr. Berry's breakfast. <laughs> I, I think I'll give him a treat today. I'll scrape the toast. No, he likes to do it himself. That's the only exercise he gets. Uh-oh, here comes the boss now. Good morning, Rochester. Now, let's see. What have we got for... Oh, orange juice, cornflakes, ham and eggs. Rochester, what'd you make such a big breakfast for? You know I'm on a diet. Dog, gone, that's right. Now, we can't let all this food go to waste. You made it, and you'll have to eat it yourself. Oh, boss, don't be so mean to me. <laughs> Mean? Why, well, I've been on a diet a whole month, and every morning I come down and find the same big breakfast. Now, how can you make such a mistake? Well... And what's that strawberry shortcake on top of the oven? That's the dessert for the mistake I'm going to make for dinner. <laughs> what? What did you say, Rochester? Disregard, boss. Disregard it. Well, just don't let it happen again. I'll have this tea and toast. Hmm, look how burnt the toast is. It's like charcoal. Give me a knife. I'll scrape it. Yes, sir. Ooh, the toast is hot. You hold it, Rochester. Here. I got it. Scrape away. <laughs> Take it easy, boss. You're down to me. <laughs> oh. Well, never mind. I'll have one of those English muffins. Say, that looks good. It's got honey all over it. And look at that raisin on top. That's a bee. He's still working on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go away, bee. Go away. Go away. <laughs> well, how do you like those California bees? They open the windows themselves. <laughs> Rochester, I'll have my tea now. Never mind, you answer the door. I'll get the tea myself. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Hello, Rochester. It's Mr. Benny. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Rochester. I didn't know. Didn't know what? Well, that black band you're wearing around your sleeve. Oh, this. Mr. Benny makes me wear it every time he loses the Academy Award. <laughs> Well, why does Mr. Benny take it so hard? A lot of actors lose it. I know, but he's been losing it since 1902. <laughs> Rochester, what's keeping... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. So you lost the Academy Award again, huh? Yeah, Crosby won it. And you know, Phil, it's going to be hard to hate him. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can hate one of his kids. <laughs> But I'll tell you one thing, Phil. I didn't mind losing the award this year, but I certainly think I should have won it when I made that picture, George Washington Slept Here. George Washington Slept Here? You didn't even come close that year, did you, Jackson? Close? Washington got more votes than he did. <laughs> Rochester. The bed came in second. <laughs> Never mind. And bring Mr. Harris some coffee. Okay. 
Phil, what brings you over here so early? Well, Jackson, I got great news for you. You know how you and Mary have always been picking on me for running around and wasting my time? Yeah. Well, starting today, I'm going to settle down and be a dignified businessman. Well, congratulations, Phil. What did you do? Bought a saloon. (laughs) What? Well, you know, a, a, a nightclub. Oh, a nightclub. That's different. Yeah. Me and Frankie, my guitar player, are running it, and things are going great, Jackson. Last night, our bartender was so busy mixing them drinks, he didn't have time to sit down. No kidding. Yeah, and tonight ought to be even better. We're going to let the customers in. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. So you and Frankie bought a nightclub, eh? What are you going to call the place? Well, I ain't got a name for it yet, but... Well, I got a slogan. A slogan? Yeah, you know, like Duffy's Tavern. Now, their slogan is, uh, where the elite come to eat. Uh Uh-huh. Mine's going to be where the swine come to dine. (laughs) Phil, are you crazy? You going to call your customers swine? When you got to close at 12, Jackson, it don't make no difference what you call it. (laughs) Well, take my advice, Phil. You got a great opportunity to be a businessman. If you want to be successful, run your nightclub in a real high-class way. Don't you worry, Jackson. I'll handle the joint right. Here's your coffee, Mr. Hare. Thanks, Rog. Hey, what's that noise, Jackson? Oh, that's the sculptor working upstairs. I wish he'd finish that statue of me and go back to St. Joe. How's the coffee, Phil? Well, Jackson. Hey, let's turn on the radio and see what's going on, huh? Okay. Spike Jones playing Let Me Love You Tonight. <laughs> and now, folks, a message on behalf of my sponsors, the Bleeding Heart Finance Company. <laughs> Friends, do you need money? Could you use a little extra cash? Do you want a loan of ten, fifty, or a hundred dollars? You do? <laughs> hmm, get something else, Phil, will you? Have? It seems like ages since I've heard his voice. I wonder if it'll be the same when I hear it again. I can't stand this waiting, this waiting, this suspense. I can almost hear him now. Oh, I hope he hasn't changed. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't. Ten more seconds and I'll know. Five seconds. Two seconds. There it is. Four o'clock. Grew and watch time. (laughs) Tick (laughs) tock. Say, she was wonderful. What a part for Ingrid. Hey, get another station, Phil, will you? Have you been hit by an automobile lately? <laughs> Do you feel run down? <laughs> Are you getting fat? Are you beginning to launch a pond? <laughs> Are the spaces between your teeth suffering from middle age spread? <laughs> If you have these or any other ailments, why not try sympathy soothing? <laughs> Remember, folks, sympathy spelled backwards is yatapamus. Y a t a p m y s. Yes, folks, sympathy soothing syrup is good for people over 35 and wonderful for people under 35. And to you people who are exactly 35, may I say happy birthday? (laughs) That's sweet. I missed it by one year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our special guest, the singing star of the Lucky Strike program, Larry Stevens. Thank you very much.
very much, Larry Stevens. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, our guest star will be that eminent songwriter, Maxwell Langley, who will play his own composition, the current song hit entitled, Raise the Awning, Mother, Daddy's Leading a Shady Life. <laughs> hey, that's a good song, Phil. I must learn it on the violin. Raise the awning, Mother, cause Daddy's leading a shady line. No, it's third on the hit parade. There's somebody at the door. Shut off the radio, Phil. Come in! Who is that? It's me, Jack! Oh, hello, Don. Come on in. Hiya, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Hi, Phil. Hello, Dante. What are you doing around this way, Don? Well, you know I'm getting a little heavy, Jack, so every morning I go for a five-mile horseback ride. Oh. I was out this way, so I thought I'd just drop in. Good, good. Where's your horse? Oh, he's lying down on your front lawn. <laughs> Well, the rest will do him good, you know. Say, boss. What is it, Rochester? I just got into the sculptor's room, and he's almost through with your statue. He is? Yeah, but you ain't gonna like your expression. Why, has he got me frowning or smiling? You can take your choice. He gave you two heads. <laughs> two heads? Yeah, you're holding one of them on your lap. Oh, for heaven's sake. You look like you're going bowling. <laughs> hey, Jackson, I gotta run along now. See you later. I'm going too, Jack. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. I'll go out with you. So long, Jackson. Bye, Jack. So long, fellas. Gee, it's so nice out, I think I'll take a little walk. Oh, Rochester, I'll be back in a little while. Okay, boss. This is really a nice day. Yeah, da dee da dum 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 da dee da dum bum dee da da dum da da dum dee da dee. Well, well, look who's here. Oh, I haven't seen you in quite a while. Come here, come here. What's the matter? Why are you crying? Oh, that. Uh, don't take it so hard, lassie. I didn't win either. <laughs> Better luck next year. Yeah, da dee da dum da. Raise the awning, mother. Father goes a daddy is leading. A shady life. Oh, oh, uh, a daddy's leading a shady life. Oh, that's a terrific song. <laughs> well, I've walked far enough. Guess I'll turn around and go back. Well, here comes that little girl that's on the Fibber McGee program. Hello, little girl. Hello. <laughs> I bet you I know who you are. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you. Hmm. Poor little thing has a cold. <laughs> Oh, oh, Mr. Benny. Huh? Oh, it's you, Mr. Kern. Yeah, I was just on my way over to your house. You were? Yes. You know that interview you gave me last week about how you found Rochester was very interesting. My editor liked it a lot. Well, I'm glad. In fact, he liked it so much, he sent me back to get another story. Really? Mm-hmm. He wants to know how you found Mary Livingston. Oh, Mary... Well, Mr. Kearns, this is a rather unusual story. Walk back with me. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Now, Mary, as I mentioned last week, joined me on the radio about three months after I got started. I happened to be in Los Angeles at the time, almost 14 years ago. Yes, I remember that was the day I bought this shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> they, uh, they give guarantees, you know. Anyway, it was the uh, latter part of 1932. That's right, 1932. I was downtown, and as I was passing the May Company, I noticed they were running a sale, so I stopped to look in the window. Just a gigolo <laughs> Everywhere I go uh, People know the part I'm playing Gee, that's a catchy new tune. Yum, dum, da, da, dum, dum, da, dum. Fall is such a nice time of year. Leaves are turning brown, and the air is... Hmm, I wonder if Hoover will be reelected. <laughs> I think I'll get me one of those high collars. Nah, my neck's too short. <laughs> when the blue of the night, boo 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 boo. That new singer has a nice style, but he can't last. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at those shirts in the window. Silk ones with stripes. Four ninety eight marked down to a dollar ninety nine. I think I'll go in and let him try to sell me one. <laughs> hmm. 
Mm, let's see. I wonder where they... Oh, pardon me, sir. Can you tell me where the shirt counter is? Shirt counter? What are you asking me? Do I look like maybe a floor walking? <laughs> Walker. Well, I thought you were. You see, you're not wearing a hat. In this depression, who could afford a hat? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe I can help you get a job. What do you do? Well, I do different things. I can be a carpenter. Huh? I am also a plumber. A plumber? Uh-huh. And I'm also a very good painter. <laughs> oh, you can do a lot of things, can't you? Yeah, but in this depression, there's nothing to paint or to plump or to cotton. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, thanks just the same, but I've got to find the shirt counter. Oh, well, say, maybe I could enlighten you. <laughs> Never mind, I'll find, I'll find it myself. <laughs> oh. Oh, there it is over there. Boy, look at those sporty shirts. I love those new long pointed collars. What can I do for you, young man? <laughs> I uh, want to buy a shirt. I like the silk one with the stripes. Yes, sir. Shall I wear it for a few days, or do you want to break it in yourself? <laughs> I'll uh, I'll take it now. How much is it? Well, that'll be one dollar and ninety nine cents. A dollar ninety nine? Okay. Here's two dollars. Well, I'll have to go upstairs for the change. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. I'll wait. <laughs> Just a gigolo everywhere I go. A people know they... Hey, look at that beautiful dame behind the hosiery counter. What a chicken. I think she's looking at me, too. Going over and try to date her up. Say, Mary, Mary. What is it, Mabel? Look at that guy over there. He's staring at you. Where? Right over there at the shirt counter. Say, he looks kind of prosperous, don't he? How can you tell? With those bell-bottom pants, he might be barefoot. <laughs> Look at him winking at us with both eyes. And get a load of that straw hat he's wearing with a bright red ribbon around it. Yeah. And look what it says on it. Oh, you kid. <laughs> Hey, Mabel, he's tipping his hat at us. Yeah, he's got the string in his pocket. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, he's coming over here. You want me to take him, Mary? No, no, I can handle him. Just a gigolo, uh, everywhere I go, uh, uh, people know the part I'm playing. Look at him, he's walking like Theda Barra. Yum, dum, dee, da, doom, yum, dum. Hello, kiddo. Where have you been all my life? Avoiding it. <laughs> hey, hey, you're good. Just my type. I like my tomatoes with a little spice. <laughs> say, say, baby, what's your name? Mary. Mary what? Quite contrary? <laughs> oh, brother, is this guy corny? <laughs> what was that? Look, my name is Mary Livingston. I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey. I know I should be in pictures, but I'm happy here at the make company. They think I'm a very good sales girl. Now, what do you want, Jelly Bean? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. You got me wrong, baby. Oh, stop tipping your hat. What? And take your bag of peanuts off the counter. <laughs> no, no, baby. I put those up there on purpose. Help yourself. <laughs> Help yourself. Say, you're a pretty sporty guy. Do you think so? Yeah. Do you always carry that ukulele? <laughs> oh, this? <laughs> you ought to hear me out in a canoe. <laughs> Say, I'll bet that ukulele set you back plenty. No, no, they gave it to me when I bought this suit. <laughs> Say, Mary, uh, you don't mind my calling you Mary, do you, ma'am? If I, um, if I wait around and you get through, uh, can I take you home? No, I don't think so. Oh, why not? I got a taxi outside. Look, I went out with a taxi driver once, and the way... I'm not a taxi driver! <laughs> Look, baby, don't you know who I am? No, thrill me. <laughs> Well, 
hang onto the counter, baby, and brace yourself. I'm Jack Benny. Can I let go of the counter now? <laughs> oh, you're kidding, baby. You know who I am. I'm a big shot. I've been on the radio three months. So what? My alarm clock's been on the radio three years, and I got that at Woolworth. <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> Say, you're plenty fast on the trigger. What are you doing working here in a department store? You should be on the radio. <laughs> what did I tell you, Mabel? I knew it was coming. What? My mother told me there'd be men like you, but I thought they'd be much younger. <laughs> much a- Say, you're terrific. Listen, baby. You got everything it takes. Good looks, a nice speaking voice, and what a personality. I bet you tell that to all the girls. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you laughing at? The way you're leaning against the counter. Why? It's pressing the bulb in your pocket and the water squirting out of that flower in your lapel. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I can't fool you at all, can I? Listen, Mary. Mary, listen. You ought to be on the radio with me. I get you places. You'll be a big star. Say, you're not kidding, are you? Of course not. Why don't you meet me tonight for dinner, and we'll talk things over. Okay. You know, there's a nice cafeteria across the street, and we can... Cafeteria? Not when you go out with Benny, baby. I'll take you to the Brown Derby, and afterwards we'll go dancing at the Coconut Grove. When you're out with me, baby, money means nothing. <laughs> well, I'll take you... Pardon to... me, mister. Here's your penny change. Thank you. <laughs> Baby, I'll take you any place you want to go. All right, I'll meet you in front of the store at 6 o'clock. I'll be there. So long. So long. Oh, boy, she's going to be great on my radio program. Of course, I don't want to spoil her. I wonder how much they pay her at the May Company. Oh, I'll ask her tonight when we're having dinner at the cafeteria. And that, Mr. Kearns, is how I found Miss Livingston. Well, that's a very interesting story. Well, here's my house, Mr. Kearns. Would you like to come in for a cup of coffee? Well, no, thanks. I've got to run along now. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Yeah, da dee da dum da dum da dee da da <laughs> Folks, this ends another program, and we'll be with you next Sunday night broadcasting from the redistribution station at Santa Barbara. Meanwhile... Oh, Jack, Jack, I'm so sorry I'm late. It's the first time I've ever missed a program. Yeah, what happened to you? Well, I took a nap before the broadcast, and my alarm didn't go off. Well, it's all right, Mary. Don't worry about it. What'd you do, Jack? What was the show about? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Oh, come on, tell me. No, no, you wouldn't be interested. Good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Forces at Santa Barbara's redistribution station, the Lucky Strike Program. Starring Jack Benny. Fasten your safety belt, batten down your hatch, and keep out of range, because here he comes, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was a very unusual introduction. But during the last war, when I was on a ship, I w- it wasn't batten down the hatch. It was batten down the hutch. Batten down the hutch? Yeah, uh, things were so quiet, our admiral was raising rabbits. <laughs> That's the first egg, you hutch it. No. <laughs> anyway, Don... It's wonderful being up here at the Santa Barbara redistribution station, isn't it? Huh? Oh, it certainly is, Jack. You know, uh, do you know what an army redistribution station is, don't you? Oh, of course, Don, of course. That's where they bring the boys to kind of feel them out to see if they'd like to be civilians again. <laughs> Ah, yesterday, one fella here volunteered to be a civilian, and this morning he begged to be back in uniform. Found out that a blue serge suit picks up everything but girls. <laughs> anyway, Don... Now, wait a minute, Jack. You've got the whole thing wrong. A redistribution station is where they send the boys to be reassigned for further duty. Oh, oh, oh. 
Gee, how can a big star like me, who almost won the Academy Award, be so stupid? <laughs> Uh, anyway, Don, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? The boys station here at Santa Barbara have asked me to present you with this delayed action bomb. <laughs> the delayed action bomb? Why give it to me? We've delayed it long enough. <laughs> the fine way for the Army to treat me just because I used to be in the Navy. Oh, they were only kidding, Jack. In fact, you wouldn't have had a room last night if the Army hadn't control of the Biltmore Hotel here. You told me yourself you had a nice room. Oh, the room was all right, but all night long, a sentry with a rifle over his shoulder kept walking up and down outside my door. They wanted me to pay in advance. Why didn't they say so? <laughs> Anyway, another thing, I don't like the idea of having those soldiers act as bellboys. The first time I ever walked into a hotel registered and was carried up to my room on the end of a bayonet. I felt like a pin cushion and I ain't got much cushion. Believe me, the next time... Okay, time... fellas, you can laugh and relax because Harris is here with them dynamite cracks. Fine, dynamite cracks. Phil, if you're such an ad lib comedian, why didn't you get here at the start of the show? Well, I would have, Jackson, but I was outside talking to a soldier about his post war plans. His post war plans? Yes, yeah, so I asked him if she had a friend for me. <laughs> oh, Harris, you non commissioned joy boy. <laughs> dynamite cracks. Well, those are the kind of jokes that would make Fred Allen go out and borrow some blood so he can blush. <laughs> and you know that... What are you talking about, Jackson? I got talent. Why, I'm the main attraction at my new nightclub. Oh, yes, Phil, I meant to ask you. How's that new business venture of yours coming along? Yeah, Phil, how is that joint? Look, Jackson, don't call my nightclub a joint. I got a pretty classy layout there, you know. We got beautiful oil paintings on the wall, we got drapes on the window, and soft lights on the ceiling. What do you got on the floor? Hair, it used to be a barber shop. <laughs> a barber shop? Yes, as a matter of fact, the barber's lease isn't up yet, so we're both operating in the same room. <laughs> what? <laughs> While I'm clipping them on one end, he's clipping them on the other. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. You know, yesterday a guy came in for a once-over lightly and the barber steamed his face with my bar towel. With your bar towel? Yeah, that's the first time I ever saw a guy stagger home from a shave. <laughs> Phil, what That's our of... slogan, Jackson. Shave and a hangover, two bits. <laughs> Phil, I don't know how you get mixed up with all... Hello, this. Jack. Hi, you fellas. Hello, Mary. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Mary, Mary, just stand there. Gee, you look beautiful. No wonder the Fashion Academy voted you the best-dressed woman in radio. What a lovely outfit you're wearing. What material, what lines, what style. What are those things hanging around your neck? My shoes, my feet hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I don't blame you. Sometimes I feel like doing the same thing, but my shoes never match my suit, you know? <laughs> What's new, Mary? Oh, not much, Jack. My mother sends you her regards. Oh, did you call her? No, I just got a letter from her. Oh, another letter from your mother, huh? Well, what does your father's top sergeant have to say? <laughs> Here it is. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, yes. I would have answered your letter sooner, but Pop and I have been very busy on the farm with our spring planting. We just finished a few days ago, and already the field is full of corn. And by the way, how is Jack? <laughs> I, I don't get the connection there at all. Anyway, we are enjoying this beautiful spring weather, and I guess it has affected Papa because yesterday he whistled at a girl. Well, good for Papa. I think he overdid it because we spent the next three hours looking for his teeth. What enthusiasm. <laughs> Things are sure happening fast these days, and the draft board seems to be in an awful hurry. Last week, your cousin Bobby went down to take his physical, and today he just returned from New Guinea on a furlough. 
Boy, that is fast, isn't it? And, oh, yes, Mary, I have some exciting news for you. Last Thursday, our whole gang went out for a drive, and your sister, babe, and the boy she's engaged to are riding in the rumble seat. We hit a bump, and the rumble seat snapped shut. My goodness. We worked for hours, and we couldn't get it open. So we called the minister, and he married him through the keyhole. <laughs> You imagine that, huh? Your cousin Bobby blew rice at him through a straw. Oh, boy, what a family. No other news. All my love, Mama. That's very cute. Uh, what's that P.S., Mary? Oh, Jack, you wouldn't be interested. I would, too. Let me read it. P.S. I read in the papers, Mary, that you won the title of the best-dressed woman in radio. How could you possibly do it on what Jack paid you? <laughs> Your mother hates me because I own the mortgage on her farm. <laughs> now, where's Larry? I want to... Here talk. I am, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> well, hello, kid. It's about time now to do a song. Okay, but before I do, Mr. Benny, I want to give you a little tip. Tip? What is it? You ought to go to Mr. Harris's nightclub. Wow, what fun! Larry, you went to Phil Harris's nightclub? Sure, and boy, was I dizzy when I left. <laughs> dizzy? Phil, you didn't give this kid any... Don't no, to... get excited, Jackson. We just spun him around in the barber chair and sent him home. <laughs> oh, go ahead and sing, kid. <laughs> I'll have to visit that nightclub the next time I need a shave. A hard song by Larry Stevens. And now, Hey, Jackson, I've been meaning to ask you, what's that thing you've been holding in your hand all this time? This? Oh, yeah. nothing. It's just a delayed action bomb. The boys here presented me with it. The boys here gave you a bomb? Yes, they voted Jack, the comedian, most likely to go places. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> Come in. Yes? There's a man out in the hall, and he wants to see you. His name is Alan. Alan? Jack, I didn't know Fred Allen was in town. Neither did I. He just wants to get in here so he can louse up my program. Look, Jackson, if Fred Allen is outside, why don't you let him in? The boys here would like to see him. Well, I don't blame him. But those bags under his eyes, he looks like he's wearing a fatigue skin. <laughs> Look, bud, go tell that guy in the hall to get going or I'll punch him in the nose. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that. Well, send him in I'll punch him in the nose myself. Send him in, will you? Okay. You can come in, mister. Okay, Allen, you asked for it, so... Hey, wait a minute. You're not Fred Allen. No, I'm Alan Ladd. Alan Ladd? <laughs> well, well, well. Alan Ladd. The guy in pictures that's supposed to be so tough, huh? What do you mean, supposed to be? Go ahead, Jackson. Punch him in the nose like you said you would. <laughs> No, no, no. He's shorter than I am, you know. Don't let that stop you. I'll hit you so hard you'll be foolish to bust back. Oh, yeah? Now, wait a minute, tough guy. Who do you think you're talking to, huh? Who do you think you're talking to? Jack Benny. Gee, everybody knows me. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so popular. Yeah, yeah, just as I thought, Benny. You're a coward. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just been listening to $10,000 worth of talent. <laughs> Never mind, Mary. I'll handle him. You know, Alan, you think you're pretty quick on the trigger, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hold on to your hats, kids. Here we go again. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. I want to settle this thing right now. Look here, Alan. Nobody sent for you. You butted in here and started this whole thing. What's the idea of calling me a coward? Because you're yellow. That's a liver condition. <laughs> What'd you come in here for? You play tough guys in the movies, and this is a comedy program. Oh, uh, yeah? Now, cut that out. <laughs> I 
Uh, Jack, I'm only kidding. I happen to be in town, so I thought I'd drop over and say hello. Oh. Oh, you were kidding, though. Well, well, that's different. <laughs> I'm glad now I didn't hit you. you know? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, in our sketch tonight, I will once again play the part of that famous fearless, crime-busting master detective, Captain O'Benny. Phil, you'll be my assistant officer, Harris, and Mary... Yes, sir? Uh, you'll be the wife of the murdered man. Is he dead yet? Not yet, but he's at the seven seas getting a little stiff. <laughs> Now, let's see. Who can be the murderer? Hey, I got an idea. Alan Ladd. Say, Alan, the murderer. I've got a great part for you. How about it? Oh, nothing doing, Jack. I'm kind of tired. I I just finished making a picture of Paramount called Saudi O'Rourke, soon to be released at all the neighborhood theaters. Men in half uniform, half price. Oh. And look, Alan, I'm still willing you to give you the part of the murderer. If you can handle it. What do you mean, if? Well, the murderer in this sketch has got to be a pretty tough guy, and I don't know whether you're the right guy for it. Hey, are you kidding? Let me tell you how tough I am. A couple of days ago, I walked up to Humphrey Bogart, grabbed me by the collar, and said, Listen, Bogey, Hollywood ain't big enough for both of us, see? And what happened? Well, here I am in Santa Barbara. <laughs> What's that you've got in your hand? Bogart's tie hit me so fast I didn't have time to let go. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. He must have other ties. <laughs> anyway, Alan, I'm sure you'll be all right for the part. And we'll do this sketch right after Phil Harris plays... There's the phone. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, I thought you were going to be here at noon. I would have bought, but I had trouble with the car. Well, what is the matter? Couldn't you start it? No, I couldn't stop it. <laughs> Rochester, don't tell me you had another accident. Uh-huh. Oh, for heaven's sake. Is my car damaged much? I don't know, but if the post-war car has the engine in the rear, you're all set. <laughs> Oh, Rochester, this is terrible. What did you hit? The First National Bank at the corner of 4th and Main. Rochester, the First National Bank is on 3rd and Main. Not anymore. <laughs> you mean you ran into a building? How in the world could you do that? Well, I was driving down Main Street and I stepped on the gas to make a light. Did you have a green light? No. Don't tell me the light was red. No, but I found out one thing. What? That middle light ain't forever amber. <laughs> you mean, you mean as you went across, the light changed? Uh-huh, and coming from the north was a greyhound buck, and coming from the south was a big truck. Oh, my goodness. Where's my car now? And any particular parts you'd like to know about? <laughs> That's awful. My car must be smashed to pieces, and after what I paid for it. But, boss, aren't you even going to ask how I am? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry I was so thoughtless. How are you, Rochester? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> That's what I thought. Now, where are you calling from? Well, this may surprise you, boss, but I'm in a phone booth. In a phone booth? What's so surprising about that? I didn't get out of the car yet. <laughs> Rochester, I'll talk to you when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Every time you take the car out alone, something happens. Play Phil. Now, as I'm beginning to see the light played by Phil Harris, who just opened his eyes. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the air, we will present our blood-curdling drama, filled with mystery, murder, and suspense, entitled... The woman in the window, or it's a good thing the Venetian was blind. <laughs> Don't hutch that one, brother. As our scene opens, I, Captain O'Benny, and my assistant, Officer O'Harris, are prowling around Santa Barbara in a police car. <laughs> Quiet night, isn't it, O'Hare? Sure is, Captain. There's not a soul on the street. Yeah, but there have been complaints that the people of this town aren't obeying the new midnight curfew. They're not. 
Now they're acting just the same as they always did. Still going to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> Say, you know, we ought to... Calling all cars, calling all cars. There's been a murder, there's been a murder. And here's the address where the murder was committed. But before we give you the address, here's a message from our sponsor. (laughs) The Best Bean Blackjack Company. Policemen, are your blackjacks getting sluggish? (laughs) They sound dull when they land on a skull. (laughs) They do? Then why not try our product? If you use the best bean blackjack, you're sure to get ahead. <laughs> and now for the address. The murder took place at 116 Serrano Avenue, which is right next to the Hacienda de la Caballero Don Juan Blanquero Amigo Cafe. I know that place, Captain. Let's get going. Okay. Hacienda de la Caballero Don Juan Ranchero Amigo Cafe. What does that mean? That's Spanish for get the rum out of your Coca-Cola, fellas. Here comes the MP. <laughs> Oh, well, come on, let's go. Okay, Mon Capitaine. <laughs> this is the place, Captain. All right, you stand guard here. I'll go inside. How do you do? I'm Captain O'Benny, and I'm here to investigate a murder. Well, come on in, big boy. What took you so long? Huh? <laughs> Baby, I'll shut the door and we'll be cozy. Okay. Be careful, Captain. It may be a trap. If this is if this is a trap, just call me Booby. <laughs> Remley nearly killed that for me. <laughs> now keep your eyes open for clues. And now, young lady, I've got some questions for you. Good, Chiefy. I've got some answers for you. Oh, you have, eh? What's your name? Just call me Cookie. Hmm, never found anything like this in Grandma's cookie jar. <laughs> now, tell me what happened. Well, my husband was murdered. Some low-down, dirty sneak climbed in the window and shot him in the back. Now, wait a minute. How could a man reach such a high window? I gave him a boost. <laughs> I knew he couldn't do it himself. I could solve this case if I could only find a man who came through the window. You don't have to look any further, Carter. Up with your hands. What? You heard me. Stick up your hands. Is this a robbery? No, I just want to see if he used Jergen lotion. <laughs> How you do, eh? Well, put away that gun. No, I have a lot of fun with this gun. Look, I'll show you. Are you, Cookie? Come over here and give me a kiss. Me? You heard me, Cookie. Come over here and kiss me or I'll shoot. Okay. Say, what do you need a gun for, handsome? Mm, Not bad, huh? Bad? Why, your kisses are like champagne, like caviar, like filet mignon. Champagne, caviar, filet mignon. If you think that's something, baby, I'll show you a real kiss. Here. Yeah, how was that? One meatball. (laughs) Is that so? Well, listen, sister. I used to be the best... Hey, I got it now. You two are partners in this crime. You wanted your husband murdered to get the famous Van Dusen pearls. Now, what's that you're wearing around your neck? My shoes. My feet hurt. (laughs) Oh, yes, I forgot. Anyway, sister, I'm going to run you in. Wait a minute, Blue Eyes. You talk to her like that and I'll punch you right in the nose. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to a transcription of an earlier broadcast. (laughs) What? And it wasn't good the first time. Cut that out. Now, come on, you two. I'm taking both of you to jail. Oh, no, you're not. Ah, you missed me twice. (laughs) Now, come on. Let's go. Hey, Captain, I heard gunshots. I heard gunshots. Yes, and here's the guy with the gun. Hmm, how do you like that? I ran in the wrong direction. Come on, Harris. We're going to drag this guy in. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, Captain. Don't lock me up. Don't lock me up, please. Give me another chance. I'll never do it again. I swear I won't. I'll go straight from now on. I tell you, I'm not really bad. I am not, eh? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Put down that red bean blackjack. <laughs> what? Give me a break. Give me a break, Captain. I'll do anything you say. Anything. Anything. Boy, if this performance doesn't win next year's Academy Award, I'm quit. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, you pull out our whole sketch. Come on, Mary, put on your shoes and let's go. 